of the 2023 Commissioner's Cup Championship Series between the Danbury Hattricks and Carolina Thunderbirds. Welcome to the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel alongside Jim Cerny. I'm Chris Lynch and Jim, I think we can all completely and totally agree that that was a bit of a mess last weekend that the Hattricks now have to dig themselves out of down two games to none in the finals and on the brink of elimination again, just as against Binghamton. Yeah, you know, you're right. Uh, but this is why you have home ice advantage, right? This is why you worked so hard in the regular season to hold off Carolina, who finished second overall in the league, to get the home ice advantage. And the hat tricks, if they've got one thing going for them, Chris Lynch, it's the fact that they are dynamic at Danbury Ice Arena, including the playoffs, 27-2-2 and in this home building. And as we talked about with Billy McCreary before the game, you know, he said, it's just another Friday night in Danbury. Let's do what we do in our home building. Don't worry about elimination. Don't worry about championships and all that. It's a Friday night in Danbury. And boy, we've been darn good. Darn good in this building this season. Yeah, the Hat Tricks leading a total record of 24-2-2. Two two. It is worth noting that one of those Regulation losses did come against this team the very first Friday of calendar year 2023 back on January the 6th. So this is a team that has had some at least measured success in this building, as much as you possibly can get throughout the course of the season. Yeah, well, the Hattricks only lost two regulation games in this building all season. And you're right, one of them was to this you know, Thunderbird team that finished second overall in the standings behind Danbury. And listen, they were the better team in both game one and game two down in their home building. 6-2 win in game one, a 5-1 win in game two. But Billy McCreary thinks that his team played a lot better in the second game than they did in the first. He thought that the team was out of sync in game one, maybe lacked a little bit of the bite and the emotion in game one, but took it up a notch in game two. Their best players need to step it up. There's no question there. 11 different hat tricks have not recorded a point yet in the final. And that includes the top two scorers on the team, Johnny Ruiz uh, and Michael Marchesan. And of course, Marchesan, who's had such an outstanding postseason, uh, has been held off the board, ha has been held in check so far in this series. So, you know, that's a little bit of a concern, but back on home ice, Billy McCreary is confident that the team is gonna find a way to get untracked offensively here after only scoring three goals on the road in the first two games. Well, as we get set to take on, let's give you the setups and the lines. The hat tricks will be throwing out 
Gordy Bennell, Johnny Ruiz, and Jacob Radcliffe moves up to that third line spot on the right wing. And the theory with that is not to break up another line that was going really well, but it's to juice Johnny and Gordy a little bit. Gordy does have a goal in this series. Johnny doesn't have a point yet. Radcliffe has probably been their best forward so far in this series. So the idea is juice the veterans by putting Radcliffe, the guy who's going, on that line. And also Michael Marchesson, Brendan Sheehan, and Zach Pamaleon moves from the defense lineup to the forward group. So a bit of a change there as well. But Pamaleon has been making that sort of switch all throughout the course of the season. Yes, he has. And he actually started the season as a forward. And then when they, they had a little depth issue on defense, he switched to, to D and actually played there pretty much exclusively the final six, eight weeks of the season. But he's more than capable stepping up on the forward line, good offensively, responsible defensively, and he'll get that opportunity on the second line tonight. The one big change in the lineup, you know, you talk about switching lines and they're also gonna shake up the power play units as well. The one big change in the hat trick lineup tonight, Chris, is that for the first time in the finals, we're gonna see the veteran Daniel Amesbury is going to play tonight He's already made his presence felt in the pregame warmups. Got into a bit of a shouting match, a little bit of back and forth banter, if you will, at the red line uh, with a couple of the Thunderbirds. So it is gonna be interesting to see him. He can be a game changer. If he plays on the right side of the line, Chris, he's a veteran guy that's won a championship before in the SBHL. So he knows what it takes to get it done. He's gonna have to turn a cheek tonight. They need him to get in on the forecheck, be a difference maker physically, but being smart. Don't take those dumb penalties. Don't let Carolina sucker you into penalties. Daniel Amesbury could be a very key guy tonight for the Hatchers. Amesbury promises to be a big part of the unit. That's the biggest change as well. No Dmitry Kuznetsov in the lineup. No change really in the decor. And of course, Brian Wilson who made 40 four and 42 saves in each of the games played down in Carolina. It's business as usual with the hat tricks in net. Absolutely, and Matt Voidy, the hat tricks goal, goalie coach said, here's the thing about this guy. It, it, it's, he's, he's got like a minimal heartbeat, if you will, right? He flat lines, and I don't mean he's, he's passed away. I mean, he's just so calm, even keeled, and that's what you need in this type of series, especially down 0-2 and facing elimination tonight. So uh, Brian Wilson, 31-5-5 and five during the regular season. He's four up, three down in the postseason and actually might have been the Hattrick's best player and most consistent player in the first two games. Hattricks are going to have to play much better in front of him and give their goalie a better chance tonight. Having been fortunate enough to go down to Winston-Salem for games one and two, which by the way, I must say, the people down there were very nice, very pleasant, very lovely to be around and I must say also, I had the very best barbecue and the best ribs I have ever had in my life in Winston-Salem. It was fabulous. I was privileged enough to go down there, and I must note, Brian Wilson, clearly the best player for the Hat Tricks. They, they have to figure out how to stop Gus Ford, who has been close to unstoppable through the first two games of these finals. Uh, yeah, yeah now listen, the Thunderbirds have scored 11 goals, right, Chris? Well, Gus Ford scored five of them, right? Two in the opener, and then the hat trick, the natural hat trick, three in a row uh, in game two. Listen, this guy can do it all, too. In the, in the beginning, the first two rounds of the playoffs, he only had one goal, but he was setting them up. He was the big playmaker. Well, here in the final, he has been the goal scorer. He's been the goal two guy. He was the leading scorer in the FPHL this season with 114 points, including 46 goals during the regular season. He clearly is the top guy that you need to shut down. But Chris, you know it's not just about Gus Ford. This Carolina offense is deep. They come at you in waves. And even if you, you work on shutting down Ford, there's going to be wave after wave coming after him offensively. It is a deep team and a very good Thunderbird team. Jan Salak figured into the setup as well. Yuri Peshtuka, a big contributor from that blue line as well. This team has an awful lot of pieces that can contend for, like, there's good reason why they're here. They have enough talent to compete for and give the Hattrick some nightmares Absol out on that ice sheet tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And listen, Gus Ford has 13 points in the postseason, so the regular season scoring champion is leading the postseason in points. There's a shot. 
but he's tied with another guy that's really good and has scored a lot of key goals in the postseason already for Carolina, and that's Peter Panacek. A veteran guy that was here, won a championship with them in 2019. He's trying to get his second ring here in five seasons with the Thunderbirds. He also has 13 points, and he's the guy that saved their season game two, round two against Columbus. He scored the double overtime goal that saved them on a night that they could have been eliminated. We'll take a quick breather, come back in a minute with the starting lineups for the Danbury Hattrick. Swift pause back in a second. Carolina Thunderbirds have come onto the ice. They'll be wearing their road white jerseys. The Danbury Hattricks on an orange out the Danbury Ice Arena night. The crowd is full of orange wearers. This place is full and rocking. Who's ready to see some good high quality playoff hockey in Hat City? Yeah, and, and you know, the crowd can really, the crowd can really give a lift to the Hattricks, uh, you know, here tonight. You're down 0-2 in the series. You're facing elimination. But this crowd's going to go bonkers. They are bonkers already. Have been for the last hour. As the Hattricks take the ice, you can hear just this place erupt right now. The first championship game that the Hattricks have played on home ice in franchise history. Let's throw things downstairs to Dre, the public address announcer, who's got the Hattricks starting lineup.
Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we ask that you stand and remove your caps for the playing of the national anthems. Playing the Canadian national anthem, please welcome in-house organist Hudson Di Tomasa. Lovely ren a lovely rendition of the Star Spangled Banner, the hat tricks about set to go. Orange all across the Danbury Ice Arena. They have been anticipating this game for a long while and there's an awful lot of significance in the specific matchup between the hat tricks and Thunderbirds when the 1920 season, the inaugural year of the hat tricks got cut short. These were the two teams 2020. The or sorry, the 1920 season, yes. 2020. Uh, yeah, the, the 2019. Yeah, the 2019-2020 like, season. No, man, no, no. The, going back yeah, the, the, the 2019-2020 season, <laughs> I mean. I'm using the second part of the year as a shorthand. <laughs> when that season got cut short, the Hattricks and Thunderbirds were the two teams leading their respective divisions. And there were an awful lot. I talked to Steve Brown about this, who was who is an assistant coach on this team now was a defenseman on that team. Everybody on the Hattricks felt like they should be allowed to finish out their season and complete it, and yeah. they just never got the chance to. And it would have been against these guys. Yeah, you know, the Hattricks were the hottest team in the league at that time, too. They were peaking right at the right time because they had a rough first half of that season. And they they really came together in the second half, and, and they were peaking right to the playoffs. And yeah, these were the top two teams, and you know, unfortunately the pandemic happened, and obviously the playoffs did not happen, and then you had the missed season, you had a run to the second round last year, and now for the first time in franchise history, to the finals, but down 0-2, a must win tonight in game three 
at home. The goalies tonight, Brian Wilson for the hat tricks, Greg Hussey, who was excellent in the two games down in Winston-Salem. Danbury in the home, Oranges going from left to right across your internet waves. And Johnny Ruiz wins the face off and shoves Hussey down to the ice. The puck is dropped, we're underway from the Danbury Ice Arena as Hussey waved off his players, thought that it was gonna be an icing, it is not. We'll play on, and Danbury already throwing some physical hits. Dowler at the point, turns, fires, first pretty easy save made by Hussey. McDonald pinching in shot, just sailed a little bit too high. Radcliffe tried to keep it in and couldn't. Vanell with the stick lift on Hussey, but still, Carolina comes up with it. Pass it to the left, back into Carolina territory, and running forward with it is Joe Kennedy. Kennedy, one of the guys they have to respect on defense as they get the puck slot shot, blocked by Jared Gow. Marcius on, dominant the first two rounds, quiet the last two games. Tried to get to the loose puck, poked over the blue line. Robertson to Yao, led the hat tricks in assists throughout the course of the regular season, has been kind of quiet. Marcia Son throws his hip directly into a Thunderbird. Sheehan had a pretty goal to open up the scoring in the first game. Out come the Thunderbirds, lost stick from McKittrick, a hard hit thrown by Sheehan. You can hear the gongs, you can hear the noisemakers. The fans are excited and ecstatic that they get to cheer on their guys in the finals, a minute 20 in. Goalless so far, long stretch pass wanted for Baker. That's underneath, nope, the officials are gonna say that did tip his stick, so Xavier Abdella and Kyle Gonzalez have to play this out. Tobias Ojek, who took a lot of punishment, actually left game two. The puck will bounce over to Lucas DiBenedette, couldn't control it, and on come the Thunderbirds. Martin up the wing, taking on Gonzalez, tried to play it backwards, Martin will keep it on his stick, tied up, wants Keplinger for help. Two hat tricks there, can't get it out to the point. Tucker Firth will play it low, and Radcliffe will just turn and clear this out to the red line. And lob back in, where Carolina will go for a partial line change. We get a whistle sounding away from the play. Are they going to call a penalty on that hit, or is that an off, and is that nice? Yep, nope, that is going to be a penalty against okay. Tobias Ojic. And to be honest, I, I think they're calling him for a high stick here. That could have been a charge. That could have been interference. The puck was nowhere near the defenseman. And you want energy, you, you want physicality, you want to pump up the crowd, pump up your teammates. You also need to play smart. And Ojik is going to head to the box here. So this is a chance for Carolina, who really just has to kind of oh, weather wait. the storm. It's matching minors. It's not going to be a power play. Dawson Baker is also going to sit down for two. All right, there you go. And that's a surprise because I have no idea what that penalty is going to be. We'll wait to see what the official word is. As it is, a minute and 59 seconds in, we are skating two on, excuse me, four on four with each player losing a man to the penalty box. Ojik's going to be for a high sticking as Carolina wins the faceoff. This is one thing they did extremely well in the two games down in Winston-Salem. It's Panacek's shot saved by Wilson. I think he may have caught a bit of the pipe as well. Uh, Stuka and Salak. Tied up, Yao and Ruiz trying to force it free. Puck sits in the corner. Yao will come away with it. Three on two come the hat tricks. Yao up the wing. He'll carry it over the blue line, try to get through Panacek. Yao, it's a high stick on, they call a high stick on Baker. High stick on Baker. And on OJ, two high sticking all the way around. Matching two minute high sticking minors on the two players who are sitting in the box. Long outlet pass for Michael Marcius on, streaking in across the wing, left for Sheehan. On his backhand, turning and looking for it. Sheehan gets crunched. Firth held him down into the boards, and Carolina will get this puck out. Keplinger across the blue line, tied up by Xavier Abdella. Heavey across to the circle, nothing there. Ford couldn't quite connect with it. Throws it to the Firth and scores it. Threw it right to the slot, and the puck sneaks through Brian Wilson. Carolina gets the game's first goal three minutes and five seconds into proceedings. Yeah, you know, the Hattricks lost their men down low there. You know, as, as you said, Ford couldn't handle that hot pass, but Kersey was wide open. And then Ford was able to collect the puck. Nobody near him throws it into the slot. Guy is open. But I think that's one Brian Wilson would want back. Went right between his pads and Carolina gets the first goal tonight, 3.05 in. And you know, I was just starting to say before, 
They kind of need to weather the storm as the visiting team and the crowd going nuts and all that, and they do better than weather the storm. They get the first goal. Puck thrown across the neutral zone. McKittrick tries to get into Keplinger, who will come away with the puck thrown across. And now Danbury has to receive the first punch. McKittrick forces a turnover. Lucas DeBenedet turns and runs it forward. DeBenedet carried to the slot, lost the puck. McKittrick to the circle, throwing on net. The McDonald shot just goes across. Dowler has to regroup in neutral territory. Shots on goal listed as being one, nothing. That one being a goal for the Thunderbirds. Long pass ahead to Benedict, got it on the red line. 15 seconds left on the four on four. Kennedy glides in, winds up for the blast, shot blocked by Yao. Kennedy tried to throw it to the slot. Yao will run up, pass it across to Radcliffe. Three on two chance. Radcliffe glides in, shot just a little bit wide, looking for a rebound, but now can't get there in time. Hussey playing up at the very top of that crease, and the puck bounced to a spot where he had to dive in order to cover it. So Tucker Firth opens up the scoring with his first goal of the postseason. He had played in, or he is playing in his eighth postseason game tonight. That's his first goal. Coplinger and Ford with the assists for Carolina. Now we should point out that the team that scored the first goal in each of the first two games ended up losing. Patrick scored the first goal in each of the first two games. Puck nearly turned over. Puck nearly turned over. They come away with it. Martin looking for it across the blue line. Martin circle shot, kick save made by Wilson. Now trying to get himself into it. Martin hit by Yao. Martin still walking with it. Bunnell tried to come over for it. Amesbury will let it go. John Butita. Throws it up to the point for Schnapp. Steps into it, drops it for Martin. Looks for some room, top of the circle. Shot save made. Rebound is loose and cleared up to the top of the circle. Butita still with it. On net, looking for the tip, and it goes wide to the boards. Riley Robertson tries to clear this out, and Carolina carrying the play in the first couple of minutes of the game. Butita pulls it off against the wall. Winds up at the point. Shot wide of Wilson. Amesbury comes over for it and will flip it. Knocked down by Grabenikov. Amesbury tried to get on top of it. Grabenikov picks up the loose puck, carries across the blue line. Grabenikov will walk this in. Holds it on his backhand, spins with it. Looks for some space. Sheehan forces the puck free. Jared Yao ahead to Zach Pamelayan. Hat tricks, trying to get themselves settled. Pamelayan creates some room, handles beautifully. Pamelayan runs on to the circle, shot wide. Had exactly the right idea, just couldn't quite finish off the play. Dowler the hit, the puck comes back into neutral. Sheehan will run it on long pass ahead. Marchesson got the tip and it bounces to Hussey who's out of his net. Hattrick's trying to force a turnover. Puck takes a bounce off the boards. Sheehan can't quite get to it. Carolina out shooting the Hattricks three to one in the early going. McDonald to the puck, wants Pamelayan. Sheehan will carry this out. Sheehan tries to pitch it forward. Marchesson at the circle, Marchesson Tried to carry forward, threw it across the open slot. Sheehan got to it. Dowler calls for it. Shot, looking for the tip. Hussey, Marchesson, trying to put it on net. It'll bounce to the corner, thrown off the glass. And Dowler has to control it. Hattricks, their best offensive shift so far of the game. Long outlet, Sheehan tried to flip this on for a pinching McKittrick. Tied up with Firth. Kittrick goes down. No penalty being whistled for here. Buck sits against the apron of the goal. And the Thunderbirds will carry this out. Keplinger pulls up, needs some room. We'll leave it for Abdella to give chase. No icing here. Gonzalez there to help him out. McKittrick will play the release valve pass to Abdella. Glides it forward. Ojik, top of the circle, winds up for the blast. Save made by Hussey. Ojik will shield it. Ford, pass off the weird spot in that corner that's always been causing problems the whole season. Loose puck. Nearly bounced to Radcliffe. It's taken away by the Thunderbirds. Rung in from the red line. Abdella and Ojik near turned it over. Thunderbirds looking for some capitalization. DeBenedet will clear it. Thrown on. Gonzalez has to come over to retrieve it. Against the SAF walls. Abdella. Long pass ahead for Ojik. Tips it on the red line. And we're going to get a dead puck. That'll take us to the under 15 media timeout. Quick pause. Back in a moment. 1-0 Carolina. 12.44 to go on the Danbury Atrix YouTube channel.
Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde drops the puck. We're going to have a fight at center. Oh, oh, Vec with a couple on. of big rights. He scores! Set Fitness is the official gym and training center of the Danbury Hatricks. Pump iron or tone up? Get sand and kick in your face. Now, nah, don't let that happen anymore. Join Set Fitness and be the best you. Hattrick's trail 1 0, 1244 to go. Here in the first period, Tucker Firth with his first of the postseason open the scoring on the first shot on goal. But I got to tell you, Chris, the thing that stands out to me this crowd, sometimes, you know, plays get so amped early goal against and, and the energy gets sucked out yeah that is not the case here in danbury tonight these fans they are still at max level right now last time there was a championship game played in this building was 2016 when the titans were here as that puck will bounce its way out Twelve thirty-four to go Three to two, the shots in favor of the Carolina Thunderbirds. We'll get a centerized face-off. Petita and Ruiz, the two captains, to dance on the center dock. Radcliffe and Schnapp gliding in, so the officials tell those two to back up. Ruiz with a clean win. McDonald around for Dowler. Wants the long pass. It flies into Carolina ice. And now behind the net gets crunched. Martin looking for the out. He'll play it up the wing. Schnapp tried to control it. It's underneath his stick. Dowler wants Radcliffe. He'll funnel it around. Hussey will settle it. 12-12, the time remaining. And it's about as good a start as you could hope for for Carolina. Turnover here. Sheehan and Marchesson combined to create it. Sheehan, Hirowitz drops it. Left it low for Marchesson, and he flubs the shot. Up to Robertson, tip, bounces. Pamaleon can't finish it off, and Carolina will get to control it and pitch it over the middle. Schnapp had to wait for Martin to get back on sides. Best offensive chance so far. Around for Marchesson, who's been quiet all finals. Marchesson pitches around Firth. Glides in, Marchesson leaves it for Pamaleon. Wanted to throw it on towards the net, caught the side of the goal. Martin gets out of the way of Marchesson's hit. Now around for Riley Robertson. We'll flip this on. Billy McCreary sending his guys on and off for very quick and short shifts. On the red line, running ahead. Pulls up, Panacek receives the pass from Salak. Panacek with to Benedet on his hip. Patrick's trying to get this puck free. Salak and DeBenedet wrestling for it. McKittrick there as well. Flipped up to the opposite side for Tobias Ojik. He'll muscle it forward. Ojik pitches it to the wall. Spins, needs some help. Ojik muscles this forward. Drops it for Kyle Gonzalez. Glides on circle shot. Just a little bit too high. Gonzalez can't quite complete the turnover. Salak controls it. Thrown ahead. Vestuka can't control it. Gonzalez comes over to corral it. 10.40 to go, one nothing. Carolina shots even at three apiece. Long pass tipped by McKittrick. No goals for McKittrick so far in these playoffs. Looking to get his first, would be a big time for him. Any one of these guys who have been missing on the score sheet so far to get their first as Wilson takes the pass around to Riley Robertson. Amesbury off the glass. Jared Yao wants Gordy Bennell. Ruiz coming over, Ruiz throws a good clean check. Robertson will pick this puck up. Shields it well from Gus Ford. Needs the pass ahead. Keplinger will knock it down. Keplinger will flip this on. Jared Yao comes over to fish the puck out. Yao has Marsha Son, who kicked it. Couldn't control it on his skate. Yao with the help. The official goes down, and the fans don't hate this. Marsha Son shields it and lobs this deep. Pamaleon overruns the would have been hit. Abdella settles it in neutral territory. We're halfway through the first period and change. Puck loose to the circle, carried out by Dawson Baker. 
One penalty for each team. They were matching high sticks. Resulted in four on four, which the Thunderbirds scored. Pamela Ann will drop it for Sheehan. Rung in deep. Peavy going for it. Left it around to the left side. Needs some help. And they've got Lucas Rowe. Flip it around to the opposite side of the offensive end. Thunderbirds doing a good job of controlling and not letting the Hattricks get any sort of extended offensive zone time so far tonight. Dowler comes over for the loose puck. 8.50 the time remaining. It's been quickly played action as DeBenedet runs up the wing, cuts it to the circle. DeBenedet still with it. Drop from McKittrick, he scores! Daniel McKittrick! His first goal of the playoffs. We're tied 1-1. Chris, what a terrific rush up by his fight to Benedet. He makes this play. Look, he's got it, sends it in front, and McKittrick is able to finish. We were talking with Billy McCreary before the game about McKittrick's kind of woes offensively in the postseason. And he's, he just needs, well, he just needs to get that confidence back. That is a huge goal for McKittrick, and we're tied at one. It comes at 11-19. McKittrick's eighth game. He's played every single playoff game for the Hattricks. His now has four points to his first goal. Benedet will get an assist on that one. His 11th point, his seventh assist. Ruiz and Benel trying to jar this puck free. A big goal to get the hat tricks back into it. Shots even at four apiece. Drop pass for Kennedy. Around Radcliffe across the blue line, winds up for the blast. Wilson the save, and Robertson picks up the rebound. Sheehan wants it low for Radcliffe. Grabenikov across for Jared Gow. Sheehan will come over and get to it. They're announcing the goal in house. Shot save on Marcius on shot. And we get a little tie up and pushing and shoving after the whistle. The assist to Benedet and Dowler on the Kittrick's goal. We're tied up, one apiece of the officials. Separate everybody, we'll take a breather here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Dr. Matt Hartsburg is the official member of the Danbury Hattricks medical team. Hartsburg Chiropractic is cutting edge chiropractic care right here in your backyard. Check out Hartsburg Chiropractic and get on the road to a pain-free hockey season and the Hattricks have pulled even. At 11-19 of this first period, we're tied at one. Daniel McKittrick, 27 goals in the regular season. Finally in his eighth playoff game, he gets his first goal, Lucas DeBenedet, and Brendan Dowler with the assists. And we're all even at one apiece. It's Dowler's first assist of the playoffs, his second point, the other being the game-winning goal in the clincher against the Binghamton Black Bears. Yeah, it, it seems like uh, he only picks up points when they count. <laughs> 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 big <laughs> points, big moments for Brendan Dowler, for the local guys. Pamela Leon tried to knock it down with his shoulder, plays in a neutral space, and he'll run this on. Flipped, running for it is Marcia Son. Peavy's there for it first. DeBenedet has been piping hot. His eighth game is 11 point. Four goals now, seven assists, and the primary setup. Marcia Son with the turnover. Drop for DeBenedet. Marcia Son, they're calling it off sides. That's a late whistle for an offsides, and we get a tie up and a fight. And you expected some of this stuff here at the Danbury Ice Arena. Yeah, you know, Tucker Firth. You know, believes Marchesan shouldn't have taken the shot, but it was a late whistle. And I think the place is so loud that I, if there was an original whistle, 
I didn't hear it. And, I didn't either. And I don't think Marcia Son heard it. And really that second whistle happened right as he was about to shoot. So Tucker Firth, hey listen, he's standing up for his goalie. You know, no issue with that. Uh, but uh, you know, I don't think Marcia Son heard the whistle and decided, hey, I'm gonna crank one on, on the unsuspecting goalie here. Yeah, I don't think he did either. It's just kind of one of those things that happens, so. Uh, yeah, and no penalties are gonna be called here. That's the correct uh, move in that situation. Neutral zone face off to Benedette, dueling against Dawson Baker. 7.21, the time remaining in the opening stanza. One goal apiece. Firth and McKittrick, the scorers. McKittrick tries to force another turnover. De Benedette couldn't quite do so. Hard hit by Dowler. Ford lost control of the puck. De Benedette across and underneath Ojik's stick. He'll chip it in over the blue line. Flubs the outlet. McKittrick tumbles. Tries to stay with it. Dawson Baker will take the outlet behind him. Firth flies it. Up to the blue line, settled down and kicked by Dowler. De Benedette runs on, similar setup to the first goal. De Benedette drops it, shot it, blocked by Firth. Ojik still with it. Ojik trying to shield this, leaves it for McKittrick. Moves it, backhand shot save made, and Hussey has it covered up. Ojik, Firth with a cross check to send him down to the ice. And now we get another tie up as well, away from the puck, McKittrick having a couple of words and shoves with Blake Peavy. Well, you kind of knew that this was gonna be a bit on the um, physical side of things. Yeah, you know, and listen, Carolina, the road team, a hostile environment, and to their credit, you know, they're playing pretty physically here, and could have been a penalty. Oh yeah, that's, that's a penalty, especially after the whistle, but I mean, it's a clear cross check to the chest. They're not calling it as such, it's and worth noting. Yeah, so it remains five on five. Again, if you're Dan Barry, and I'm sure Billy McCreary is preaching this on the bench, discipline, discipline, discipline. The Nell and Kennedy a little bit quick off the faceoff dot. Radcliffe turns, fires, shot settles in the slot, bounces up to Robertson, holds it, looking for a redirect, it kicks to the apron of the goal. Flip to Schnapp, who will get it out over Yao's stick. Robertson comes over to retrieve it. Robertson will use the net as his shield. Butita pulls off. Ruiz on one wing, Yao on the other. Robertson will take it up the middle and has Yao off the boards. He wants it for Radcliffe. He'll leave it in through Kennedy. Bunnell goes to the corner. Tangles with Grabenikov. Radcliffe jumps in on it. Puck bounces across. Ruiz going the wrong direction. Hussey falls away from the play. Yao over to the loose puck. Can't control it. He'll ring it in deep as the hat tricks are swapping players. Hussey leaves it behind him for Kennedy. Butita needs some help. Amesbury, his numerical counterpart on the ice. Kennedy running on with it. Marshall and Sheehan there. Buck bounces across the open goal. Wilson is extraordinarily lucky that there was nobody from the Thunderbirds able to jump on that as Marshall creates some room. Runs it, Marchesson carries, drops the pass, Gonzalez controls it, Marchesson winds up for the blast, and Hussey will put it in his glove. More pushing, more shoving. It's Hussey, the forward Hussey, and Marchesson that is. Yeah, Brendan Hussey, uh, brother of goaltender Greg Hussey. And you know, that that's another example. You know, Marchesson's gotta be careful there. Maybe, you know, maybe he got sticked, maybe he got an elbow, whatever the case was, but he took two cross checks at Hussey along the boards there. Can't do that. Be physical, play hard, but be smart. Can't emphasize that enough, though the officials certainly are giving quite a bit of latitude to each team so far. They toss Panacek from the faceoff dot. Pestuka will go in his stead. Gian will win it. Robertson rings it low. Marcia Son waits for it, controls it. Marcia Son shoved off the puck. Wants it underneath. Sheehan tries to handle it. Sheehan can't control it. Played up to the wing. Running on with it. Yao stands his ground. Sheehan will run it forward. Sheehan tried to carry it. Marcia Son will ring it low. Pamaleon can't control it. Sheehan up top. Marcia Son tries to put the shot on. It's sticked aside by Hussey. Sheehan off the pass from Pamaleon. Yao tried to kick it to himself. Yao sweeps low. Yao 
Pulls up, Yao still with it. Good job of stick handling here by Jared Yao. Needs somewhere to go with it. McDonald with him, receives the pass. McDonald to the circle, across. Ojik the shot, Hussey got across and the stick came on. We have a Thunderbird down as McDonald tying up as well and having a couple of words and we'll get more fisticuffs with Martin. We had a Thunderbird down away from the play. I think that was Panacek. Hussey's out of his crease as well. Pamela on helmet has come clean off. And the officials have to do some work in order to separate everybody. This is what started everything. And a setup away from the play as both penalty boxes look like they're open. Don't know if that's just for the media timeout. We'll take a breather, come back in a moment from the Danbury Ice Arena, quick pause. New Haven Nighthawk Brewing is brewed right here in Connecticut and featured at the Rabbit Hole. New Haven Night Brewing Company is the beverage of choice at the Danbury Arena. Grab a cold one and party like you're in Elm City. Tied at 1, 436 to go in the first period. Game three of the Commissioner's Cup Championship Series. And the hat tricks are going to go to the penalty kill. Big opportunity here for the Thunderbirds late in the first period. A two-minute roughing minor is the call against Brendan Sheehan as the horns sound a bit louder. Hat tricks with a full crowd here at the Danbury Ice Arena. Carolina throughout the course of the regular season. And a team that has gotten their goals on the power play as they'll throw it across for Firth, the goal scorer the first time around. Firth drops off for Baker. A patient, methodical unit. Looks for it on net, shot save made. The puck bounces to the slot. Tries to get this out and cleared by Johnny Ruiz. The whistle sounds, what do we have? We have another penalty? I think this was gotta this be, uh, I, it's gotta be on Carolina. I mean, Abdella was, you know, was about to clear that puck. Yes, it is. crushed from behind. It's Keplinger who's heading off. Yeah. It's a cross check yeah. against Keplinger is what they're calling it. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. I didn't see the referee's arm go up immediately, but I thought that that should have been a penalty. Tell you the truth, I didn't see the hit as well, so you got that one. Thanks for catching that, Jim Cerny. A minute 37 worth of four on four. It's worth noting. This is where the situation in which the Hattricks gave up the game's first goal. Also, the penalty kill is now one for one for Danbury. The first power play for Carolina comes to a conclusion. De Benedette won the faceoff up for Robertson. Yao will step into some room, leaves it low. McKittrick, the Hattricks goal scorer, turns the puck, takes a weird bounce on the ice. Yao holds it. Teams at four on four. Again, Carolina scored their goal at this four on four turnover. Kennedy can't get this out. Robertson, the shot save made by Hussey. And Stuga gets crunched. And the puck is iced. Chance for you to catch your breath. Boy, it's a lot of quick pace here. Good back and forth hockey. Exciting first period tied at one. Greg Hussey, the goaltender for the Thunderbirds, started the season in Watertown. You know, he, he and his brother helped the Wolves win the championship a year ago. So he's looking to make it two for two. He is 4-0 and in the playoffs, a 217 goals against, and a 943 save percentage. He's played five games. He came on in the second round, one game in relief, and has started four straight since. Been very, very good. He was remarkable in the two games in Winston-Salem as the Hattricks have flipped the shot counter in their favor, 10-5, to 5, doubling up the Thunderbirds right now. Salak will hand this off for Peshtuka, holds it against the wall. Dowler trying to get this free. Dowler with the check. Panacek comes to play it up to the point. 
Walks it across the line. Kennedy hands off an Atrick circle shot. Wilson handcuffed but makes the save with 3.07 to go and 31 on the four on four. And uh, we fans should stick with us in between periods tonight. Hopefully we're gonna get Don Kernan who is the commissioner of the FPHL. Uh, he'll come on up to the booth for an interview. So looking forward to that. And then of course, Chris will sit down with one of the hat trick players as well. So we got a couple interviews uh, coming up in the first intermission. 3.07 left to go. These teams tied up at one goal apiece. Ruiz jostling with Baker. Hattricks win the faceoff. Gonzalez will take the release valve behind him for Abdella. Abdella walking forward, long pass wants Bennell. Puck bounces down at the blue line. Abdella, Bennell is free. He'll walk it in. Bennell winds up, tries to dip it back in or across the crease. Never connected with Johnny Ruiz. He gets to the loose puck in the corner, but Baker will take it away. Left behind him. Hattricks will get a truncated power play for the next 23 seconds. Not sure what they'll be able to do with it. Chance for Lucas Rowe. He'll pull up and leave it low. Hattricks caught up to him. 15 seconds. I wonder if that's enough time for the Hattricks to get a rush and a shot. Marchesson leaves it behind him for Pamelayon and Sheehan. Pamelayon goes, drops it for Marchesson. Winds up shot. Save made by Hussey. And they'll get a face off with four seconds left on the man advantage. Yeah, you know. Good little, you know, give and go there, but you gotta get somebody to the net. Like, Hussey's gonna make that save pretty much 100 times out of 100, right? He sees it clearly, puck is up high, hits him in the chest, no traffic in front of the goalie there. Somebody's gotta get to the net. Gian will hop on the dot against Dawson Baker. The officials are picking up, I'm not sure if that's something that fell off from one of the signs or if that's Something that fell down, or if something the officials dropped, but he'll put it in his pocket and we'll play on. Only a modest delay. Baker getting tossed from the faceoff, as is Sheehan, too. So Marchesson and Schnapp will hop on. Puck to the boards. Power play comes to a conclusion, so each team with a truncated penalty kill. Sits on the apron of the goal. Sheehan wrestling with Baker. Pamelayon and Kennedy jumping into the play as well. Sheehan will come over and run it down. Grabenikov bringing a good couple of hits as well. Hamileon lost it. Keplinger out to Schnapp. Carrying this out. Hamileon and Baker jostling away. Keplinger runs on. Keplinger the shot. He never got it cleanly on net. It went just a little bit wide of the crease. Thunderbirds keep this in the attacking end. Jared Yao and Hamileon to the loose puck. Hamileon gets crunched. And Brendan Sheehan will take this up at the red line. Across from Marchesson. On sides. Left in front and across the crease. McKittrick on the ice now, Peavy. Around with a minute 30 left, tied up at one goal apiece. Carolina started the scoring at four on four. Tucker Firth, the goal off a setup. Lucas DeBenedet set up Daniel McKittrick to tie the game up at five on five. Minute 15 to go. Thunderbirds cross the red line, drops it through. Kennedy to the circle, a shot off the pipe! Wow, are the hat tricks fortunate that that stayed out. Ojik will come over and sprint for the loose puck. Ojik can't get to it. Peavy leaves it across. We're down to the last minute of the period. Boy, Kennedy ripped one from the right circle and he beat Wilson clean to the stick side and that might have hit the inside of the post. The yeah. way it caromed out. Boy, he beat him clean, great shot. Fortunate moment there for the hat tricks. Left into the crease, De Benedet will play it to the wall. Ojik and Radcliffe gliding this out. Two on two they come. Ojik tries the seesaw pass, left it behind Radcliffe. Comes over and tied up against the wall with 30 seconds left. Ojik and Radcliffe punch to the corner. Ruiz comes over for it. Grabenikov controlled it. Thunderbirds looking for one more rush and one more score before the end of the frame. They got a couple of late scores in the games. In Winston-Salem, save made by Wilson on the tip by Grabenikov. Left into neutral territory. Off the ice, or off the bench was Salak. Robertson will control it and just kill off the final couple of seconds. That is that. 1-1 one, one at the end of one. And both teams had some opportunities to make that a larger score than just 1-1. One, one. Yeah, and a couple good opportunities for Carolina here in the final minute. You know, you get Kennedy hitting the post and then, you know, here, that redirect, that was not a simple save that Brian Wilson made, but he was in good position, saw it well, got his right pad out, and he made the save on the deflection right in front. 
And, you know, a little bit before that, too, you had Koplinger, who came down. He thought that he had a two-on-one down low. And Koplinger flew down right wing, and instead of taking the shot, he slid it across the, through the crease to a man that wasn't there. And it was a, an opportunity that maybe he passed up that did not end up on a shot on goal. And we're 1-1 one, one after 1. We'll take a quick breather, come back in a moment with the commissioner of the Federal Prospects Hockey League. Quick pause back in a moment here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Here at Danbury Ice Arena, I'm Jim Cerny. The Hattricks and Carolina Thunderbirds are tied at one after 20 minutes of play. Game three of the Commissioner's Cup Finals. And you know, when it's the Commissioner's Cup, you have to have the commissioner in the house. And Don Kernan is here to join us for a few minutes. Thank you Thank for you. joining us. Thank you. Enjoy listening to you guys. Uh, do a great job on the broadcast. Uh, really very good. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. And so you don't have like uh, you know a horse you know to root for out here and everything, but do you get caught up in the emotion of these games? Because there's amazing crowd down in North Carolina, and there's a you know a fever pitch crowd tonight here in Danbury. How much do you enjoy just just taking in the game, taking in the action? Um, it's a good point. It's really great. Uh, all of the facilities uh, basically they they embrace the teams. That's uh, it's great to see, you know, from the beginning of this league. Uh, I think our first year we probably drew 60, 70,000, and I think we'll hit 600,000 this year. So, you know, obviously Binghamton, uh, you know, had a good draw. And then, you know, looking at Carolina, looking at the crowd here tonight, there's really no seats. So it's uh, that's what you want to see. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I thought last year that, you know, the crowds were good, very good. But it seemed like, you know, you still had a little bit of that, you know, worry about COVID in some of the buildings. You know, people a little bit reticent. Maybe I'll go to a game. Maybe I won't go to the game. This year it seemed like we were back to normal. And, boy, the fans, as you pointed out, the numbers, the fans came out in droves to, to see action in the FPHL this year. Yeah, and the uh, it's amazing how many teams are really close. You look at the, uh, you know, some of the games in the playoffs and you look at the battle that uh, Danbury had with uh, – you know, with Binghamton, and you look at what, uh, you know, Carolina had to deal with with Columbus, it's, you know, these are all uh, very close games that could have gone either way. Tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, how the league feels about the expansion and the success of the expansion teams this season as well, and, of course, expanding again next season. I We're very excited about it, and I think what we're trying to do is, uh, as we all know, families are trying to find ways to, to go out and, and find entertainment that doesn't cost them an arm and a leg and we find it'll work in Danbury it works in all over the place when we open up uh, in Baton Rouge it's 9,000 seats it's a beautiful facility and and uh, the people are the same the people are just looking for fun they're looking for you know a hockey game and that's not going to cost them you know a thousand dollars to go to a game <laughs> exactly and you know I've, I've worked a, you know a long time I've worked in minor league baseball for a long time and I was, uh, you know, a front office executive for a team, and it was all about fun, affordable, family entertainment. That was always, no matter what team you work for, that's what it was about. That's what you were providing to your fans, as well as, you know, you hope a great, you know, a great atmosphere like this and a chance to win a championship. But it's about the fun, affordable family entertainment, and I'm sure that's what you preach as well. Well, it is, and uh, 
showing my age a little bit, but 1967, I was at the Montreal Forum, the old forum, when uh, game two, the last year that the uh, Leafs won, it was the last year of the final six. And yep. The ticket was $10. <laughs> and, uh, and it wasn't a bad seat. It was actually in the middle. Um, the Toronto's playing tonight, and I'm sure the ten, it's not a $10 ticket. It is not a $10 <laughs> ticket. And, and I'm not going to come down on the NHL. I do work for the NHL. i got to come clean on that. But, uh, you know, it's great coming here as well. But, but you're right. It's that opportunity to not spend $1,000, you know, to not to break the bank when you go to a game. But it's also a chance to get up close and to meet the players. And then the players are out in the community. Because I know it's not just here in Danbury. It's, it's a league-wide thing about how the teams treat their fans. It's completely correct, and I love the NHL. I, I coach a lot of players that played in the NHL. So it's, um, but there's the NHL, and then there's everybody else. Exactly. There is, there's only one NHL, and everything else. Uh, I've been all over the world watching the Czech games, Slovakia, Russia, and the NHL is one thing, and everybody else is something else. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> Don Kernan, the commissioner of the FPHL, is our guest here in the first period intermission. We're tied at one. It is win where season's over for the hat tricks as they face elimination, but they are 4-0 lifetime in this building in elimination games. We'll see what that is at the end of tonight. Just talking about, again, uh, or staying on the theme of the expansion teams, again, I know you don't have rooting interest here. Whoever makes the playoffs, they make the playoffs, but I really thought it was a neat story to see Motor City in their first year fight their way in and earn a playoff spot. They did a wonderful job uh, picking a team. That they, they do have a, a, a nice advantage. Uh, obviously, they're in the hockey center, Detroit, one of the probably uh, the top four or five places in the country. So I'm sure that was a big plus. But, you know, they bypassed a lot of teams that were, you know, around for three, four, five years. So they, they showed that they knew what they were doing. So, you know, we, we were very impressed with them. So as you expand to you know a couple new teams this year you know next year baton rouge what is the bigger vision for a league like this what's too big what's too much expansion or is there not such a thing well we're talking to teams in texas we're talking to teams all over i, I really think by the end of the decade uh we could go uh coast to coast um coming up with a playoff format will be difficult but yeah there's many markets like this market where you know uh they don't have a team. They would love their team. Uh, and I think we do make it affordable for somebody to, uh, to put a team together. And that's all, that's all we're doing. You know, our budget is what budgets used to be, you know, maybe 20, 20 years ago. And yeah. that's, that's all. I mean, it's basically uh, people can't afford $60, $80 for a ticket. They really can't. So it's, uh, it gives them a product that they can support. It's not the NHL. I know what the NHL is. Went to a lot of NHL games, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so it's uh, it's different, and uh, and there's nothing to compare with the NHL. Um, you know, it's it's just uh, I'm, for somebody like myself that really understands the game. It's you know, I see I see every flaw <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when yeah. I'm not in an NHL game. So I do. Yeah, for sure. And and you know it, it you know there are different levels even from this to the ahl this to the echl but you know seeing so many players uh, you know these last few years and in particular this season get opportunities you know to move up that's what it is and and, uh, right. and i see when i listen to you uh you know you're one of the people that see that you're one of the people that understands the game it's very obvious to me when i listen to you talk that you don't know the game and you know every little thing uh, about the game and uh, it's refreshing to listen to. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, and it's, a, you know, it's our pleasure to have you here tonight. I know that pretty much everybody in this crowd wearing orange doesn't want to see you at center ice tonight. I, I, they may like you, good guy and all. They don't want to see you at center ice tonight. But I understand. A man's got a job to do, right? Well, <laughs> For Danbury's sake, I hope that uh, I'm here until Sunday. Uh, I mean, that would be needed. You know what? League-wide, that would be that would be a cool thing, too, if this went all the way to five. But tonight, it's 1-1 in game three after 20 minutes. Don Kernan is the commissioner of the FBHL. We thank you so much for your time and thank wish you. you continued success. Thank you very much.
here at Danbury Ice Arena. I'm Jim Cerny. First intermission continues. We are tied at one. Tucker Firth opened the scoring for Carolina. A four on four goal at 3.05. And the hat tricks pulled even at 11.19. Daniel McKittrick's first of the playoffs after 27 in the regular season. And Chris Lynch had a chance to catch up with the hat tricks winger, Daniel McKittrick. First intermission here at the Dan Ice Arena. I'm here with Danny McKittrick. And first off, Danny, I just want to talk about how loud and how energized this crowd was. How big a boost is that to you guys? Yeah, it's a huge boost. Like, even when you're tired, you, you get to gain energy from the crowd. So big people. And let's talk about your goal and how that play developed. And what did you see as that play unfolded? Uh, Benny made a nice play, uh, walking the D. He, he does that all year. He's a great player. He found me in the slot and I just banged home. How are you guys feeling after the first period against these guys? We're feeling good right now, just one shift at a time. Uh, yeah, one shift at a time. Tied up at one apiece. Daniel McKittrick, thank you very much. Good luck. That's Chris Lynch with Daniel McKittrick, his first postseason goal. And I guess Billy McCreary switching up the lines and the line mates a little bit tonight has paid dividends, at least in the early going. McKittrick skating with DeBenedet and Ojik, and DeBenedet had the primary assist on that goal. We're 1-1 one, one after one. We're getting set for the second period. We'll step out and we'll return tied at one here in game three of the Commissioner's Cup Final. First intermission coming to a close here at the Danbury Ice Arena. The Thunderbirds are jumping back out onto the ice sheet. The Hattricks coaching staff walking in from the locker room. We're waiting for the Hattricks to take the ice as well. One goal apiece between the Hattricks and Thunderbirds. A good matchup, a good, good first period, and a great bounce back for Danbury, Jim Cerny, after they gave up that first goal. And that's a point where your fans could be taken out of it, but give the crowd a lot of credit they did not relent in their cheering or their adulation for their team. They stayed in it after uh, the first Yeah, play. absolutely. Right now, the first star of the game are the fans here at Danbury Ice Arena because you're right. I mean, listen, they're so amped up, right? And the team's amped up and, you know, blowing the roof off the building. And then, boy, three minutes in, the visitors score. The visitors who lead the series two games to none. And there could be such a letdown, even if it's just for a couple minutes. There could be that letdown, and the exact opposite happened. This crowd stayed in it. The Hattricks, too, they weren't reeling or anything. They just stuck to their to their game. There was some ebb and flow there in the period, but the Hattricks were able to get the equalizer, and I think that was extremely important. Now let's see if they can get ahead. They have led for only a touch under 29 minutes this entire series. So if they get the lead, it's something that they want to hang on to and add to. That's what they didn't do in Carolina. They got the first goal in each of the first two games, but they were never able to add to it and then eventually ended up you know, falling behind by quite a bit. So let's see what the second period has in store for us as the hat tricks getting set for period two against Carolina. Ruiz and Hussey on the dot against each other. Dan Burry in the home of orange jerseys going from right to left across your internet waves. Carolina in the road whites going the opposite direction. The puck is dropper underway for the second period of game three. Danbury looking to force a game four on Saturday. Carolina aiming to take the Commissioner's Cup back to Winston-Salem tonight. Kennedy looking for the outlet across the middle. It gets underneath Dowler and runs all the way in. Dowler wins the race against Boutita to it. Rings it around the wall. Bunnell will settle it at the blue line. Tries to get this out, gets tangled up. Hussey sends him down. And this is an icing call against Carolina. So we'll get an offensive zone faceoff for the hat tricks all of 30 seconds in. I think that Billy McCreary telling us before the game that the thing that was missing in the hat tricks game was juice. 
Like they just didn't seem like themselves. More so in game two than in game one. Yes. But not quite right. This tonight looks much more like the Hattrick team we're used to. They're skating well, they're physical, they seem to be playing with confidence. Now it's got to translate on the scoreboard, of course, because you've got a pretty darn good opponent out there that's also looking to be on top of their game. Hussey has stopped 10 of 11 shots through the first period. Brian Wilson has stopped six of the seven shots that have come on his net. Hamileon has to take the puck for a walk as Marshallson was in, lobbed high, and bangs off the iron at the front of the 200 section level. This will be a face off at center ice. They're gonna say it was tipped. So no penalty as Pam Leon just being sent off to the bench. Actually, no, he's gonna stay on. Just having a couple of words with Sheehan about what that was. Get yeah, it, it deflected right off the stick. Yeah. Right, right as he was lifting it up. So neutral zone face off, no penalty for a delay of game anywhere here. Sheehan and Panacek. We'll redrop the puck. They're telling Pamela Leon and Salak that they were getting a bit too quick jumping on towards the faceoff dot, so we do it again and Panacek wins it cleanly. Peavy will ring this round the boards. Robertson, therefore, puck bounces over Tucker for its stick. Sheehan sprinting in. Brendan Sheehan in. Shot saved me by Hussey. And Sheehan wipes out going into the boards for the rebounded puck. Pamela Leon came away with it. Puck bounces low. Panacek got to it, rung round the boards. He didn't get a ton on it. Yao keeps it at the point. Shot bounces, rolls high. Tucker Firth with Pamela Leon right on top of him. Peshtuka can't quite get this out. Yao fighting for it. Now they do get it over the blue line. That's a great, great, great chance for the hat tricks with Sheehan bearing down on top of Hussey. Loose puck, Ojek trying to get to it, and he does. Ojek, great work behind the net. Ojek. Lost control of the puck. Ojek tied up. Goes in front. Shot saved made by Hussey. And the puck bounces. Hussey with a couple of stick checks on Ojek. And Peavy will get this up and out. Across for Peshtuka. Into the circle. Walks in. Shot save made. Abdella tries to get this free. And Wilson will kill the play. What a crazy first two minutes of this period, huh? Wow, I got to tell you. Greg Hussey got away with not just one. He got away with three absolute chops at the back of the leg of Tobias Ojik and then Carolina sprints out the other way and they get a couple good opportunities but the best opportunity Brendan Sheehan a partial breakaway and he ripped off a good shot from the right circle and that is a big time save by Greg Hussey. That's all you can ask for out of your goalkeepers both ends really and it should be noted Hussey made a great Great save. Oh, it's a great one-on-one -on -one save there. And Sheehan ripped off a good shot, too. Wasn't, wasn't a clean breakaway, partial breakaway, I called it, but he clearly had the step. We're getting some discussions between the officials. I'm not exactly sure what this could be about. Yeah, I, I, I don't either. You know, there were a couple saves Puck should know, be made by Brian Wilson. Faceoff should be in the left circle, right? I don't know the if, right circle yeah. as we look at it. I don't know if this is, I don't know if they're discussing a penalty or anything. I'm just, I'm just not sure as you see Ford and Ruiz, the two letter wearers on the ice. Now I know this irritates the fans and probably both coaches as well. But if there's any question on anything, I yep. never have an issue if the officials get together to talk it over, right? Me neither. And we'll have that face off to the left of Brian Wilson. Okay, no changes here one way or another as Ruiz and Baker will dance. The officials blow it dead. Weren't ready to drop it there, saying that Keplinger and Gonzalez were jostling on the glass side of the dot. Ruiz can't win this one, punched out by Abdella. Does this have the steam to turn into an icing? Yes, it does. So two minutes exactly gone by in the second. Boy, Johnny, very emotional tonight. Very, very intense. You saw he won that face off cleanly, and then the you know referee blew the whistle, said, no, no, we're going to do it again. And Johnny was literally like hopping mad, you know, yelling. I don't know if he's yelling at himself or the official. He is fired up tonight. Still looking for his first point in the series. At the circle, Dawson Baker 
Got it underneath. Abdella had lost his stick. Gonzalez gets to the bouncing puck. Gonzalez slaloms to the center. We'll ring it in deep. Looking for Benell at the opposite corner. Underneath him and played out to neutral space. Pitched in by Xavier Abdella. Metrics back on sides. Amesbury bearing down. Dips out of the way of a hit. Pass to Kennedy. Abdella got to the puck ahead of Gus Ford. Thrown in. This is going to turn into an icing. Nope. They're going to say it caught a Carolina stick on the way in. Thrown out. This will die before it ever has a chance of turning into a Carolina icing. Dowler had an assist on the Kittrick's goal. Tried to carry this out. Dowler shields it. Runs on through Kennedy. Martin got to it. Bounces. And Martin tried to play it around away from Sheehan. That's a tough bounce. Marsha saw hip checks Ford. Puck bounces off of Dowler's skate and backwards into Danbury Ice. Dowler looking for the long outlet. He's got Pamela on. Across, great pass for Marchesson, connects with him. Marchesson glides in at the circle, the shot save made by Hussey. Rebound, Pamelion tried to get to it, tried to poke it onto Sheehan's stick, and Schnapp will flip this up for Butita. Whacked up by Dowler, Schnapp still running on with it. Schnapp fumbles it, shot, ale, sail up top, and almost hit the scoreboard over the protective netting. That's a high bouncing puck to get up all the way down. Yeah, deflected off a stick and way, way, way up high. Boy, that was a good, good opportunity by Marchison, who's playing with a lot more jump tonight, Chris. And that was a good opportunity there. And a real, just calm, quick, left pad save there by Hussey in goal. You can tell Hussey's playing with a lot of confidence. 3.29 gone by here in the second period. Tied up at one goal apiece. The fans, they're having a good time tonight. Butita and De Benedetta, as the officials have been very strict on the face-off rules of the shot on save made by Wilson. He saw it through some traffic. Ojik cheating ahead. McKittrick runs on. McKittrick gets through the hip check. Logs on, looking for the redirect. De Benedetta goes into the corner. Puck bounces up, and Butita will get this out. Lucas Rowe will run on. Jared Yao's first on the puck, thrown to the Carolina bench. Ojik across the middle for DeBenedet. Glides in, DeBenedet, McKittrick on the left. Out in front, wanted it to reconnect with DeBenedet and couldn't quite play it to him. DeBenedet turns at the circle. Poked off by Butita. Lobbed in. Butita gets through Jared Yao. One on one, they run on. Butita pulls up and waits for reinforcements. Rowe at the circle, receives the pass. Turns, wants to put it on towards the net. Bounces weakly to Butita behind the net. Who takes the hit from Ojik, leaves it behind. Salak goes to the net. Yao and Robertson tie him up. De Benedette tries to get the clear. Firth winds up for the shot. He'll pass it instead to Butita to the slot off Ojik's skate. McKittrick trying to get this out. Turning at the circle is Peshtuka. The save made by Brian Wilson. Carolina up to 11 shots now. Point shot. Firth can't get it on. It's blocked down. Across for Ojik. Grabenikov will hold it and take the release valve to Tucker Firth. Hattrick's only getting a partial line change. Peshtuka walked to the slot, shot, save, made. Where's the puck? Wilson trying to cover it, and he does cover it. Stretches out the full length from toe to glove to get on top of it. That is a terrific save there by Brian Wilson. Boy, fighting through the traffic to get to that puck, Chris. Terrific job by him. And boy, give Carolina credit. That puck comes out to the neutral zone, and they were so quick about turning you know, getting the puck in the neutral zone and then turning back into their offensive game that the Hattricks couldn't get the full change they were looking for. And I was watching Tobias Ojik in particular. That was a long shift for that line, and they looked gassed. And Wilson pretty much had to be the one-man show to keep that puck out of the net there. Hattricks were gassed at the end of that shift. Ojik took a lot of punishment down in Carolina as the shot on save made. Peshtuka, the quick shot off the draw, flipped up by Radcliffe. Ruiz trying to work his way through the mess. Panacek got to it. Jumps it to the blue line and Clary's over. Radcliffe pokes it off his stick for a second. Keeps it against the corner. Poked free. Ruiz hands off for Radcliffe. Radcliffe across the red line will pitch it in. Bunnell sprints to the circle. Kennedy can't do anything without. Grabenikov is there to help him out. Up to Peshtuka. Turned it over to Xavier Abdella. It just has to lob it in as the hat tricks were off sides. Kennedy Runs it over the middle. He'll run it to the wall. 
Take, gets a fortunate bounce, tried the wrap around the shot, sneaks underneath and the charging stick of, I believe, Rowe. Sheehan will flip it in off his backhander. Got to the self pass. Bunch of Thunderbirds got to it as well. Sheehan low for Marsha Son. Can't control it, Kennedy got on top of him. Pamelaon will flip it for Sheehan. Sheehan across for Marsha Son. Didn't get a lot on that shot. Keplinger trying to get this out. Thunderbirds having an impossible time getting out of their own end right now. Grabenikov trying, holds it. Pamelaon harassing him. Kennedy will finally get this out and up for Dawson Baker. Across the blue line, drops the pass for Keplinger. McDonald catches up, shot goes right up top. I'm not sure Wilson got a piece of it at all. That may have been tipped by McDonald. We'll take the under 15 right here. Quick pause back in a second. Here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel, tied at one apiece. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde across the block. We're gonna have a fight at center. Oh, oh, back with a couple on. of big rights. He scores! Litchfield Distillery is the spirit of hard work. Batchers of Litchfield Distillery in honor of the early farmers of Northwest Connecticut present to you the locally made Litchfield Distillery bourbon, vodka, and gin. Grab it at the rabbit hole and hoist the barrel with the hat tricks. 13.43 to go in period number two, game three of the Commissioner's Cup Championship Series. And we are all tied at one. Hat tricks have never led in this one, as we pointed out at the top of the period. They've only led for roughly 29 minutes this entire series. They trailed 2-0 in the series, but they're 1-1 on the scoreboard tonight again. Daniel McKittrick with the big goal about midway through period number one that tied it. And Brian Wilson has been excellent so far here in the second period. The one goal he gave up, I'm sure he would like to have back, but he has been excellent through the course of the second period as Lucas DeBenedet wins the faceoff, rings it around for Tobias Ojek, takes the crunch from Baker. Peavy, uh, tipped by uh, McKittrick, loose puck. Xavier Abdella will fly this on directly into Hussey's glove. He plays it out. Martin. Fighting the puck a bit, lobbed out. Abdella catches it and has to ring it deep. Hattricks regroup. You hear the horns as Ford tries to get this out. It's over to Benedette's glove. He still gets to it. Goes down, no penalty. Ahead for Ford. Ford runs on the shot. Save made by Wilson. That's the most dangerous man on either side of the ice. And he got a great shot. Wilson, his most important save of the night to this point. Yeah, Gus Ford's had a, had a quiet night. I was just thinking in that before the break. Boy, we haven't called Gus Ford's name a lot. But listen, man, it only takes one opportunity for that guy to cause trouble. And Gus Ford, you know, took the head man feed up right wing, snapped a good shot on net, but Brian Wilson confidently came down. Uh, came out, cut down the angle, and made the save. Point shot by Firth, save made by Wilson. Schnapp will leave it low, bounces over Ruiz. Spinning with it, Hussey sits at the circle. Ruiz has thrown a couple of checks. Puck bounces to McDonald, flown off the glass and out. Susie, the former hat trick, ran back for it. They're gonna say he didn't get a piece of it, so we'll stay in Hattrick defensive ice. Well, Vinny Susi played for the Hattricks last season. Good regular defenseman for them. Bounced around a little bit this year. Finds a home on a team that finished in first place and is one win away from winning the championship. So he found himself a good spot. Not a bad situation for Susi. Good defensive defenseman, not, you know, not a big scorer but a good, reliable defenseman. He's played his role well so far for the Thunderbirds as Puck is loose, Ruiz and Firth going for it. Firth will drop the pass to Rowe. Off the glass and up to McDonald. Schnapp got behind the defense, turns and shoots it, save made by Wilson. You wouldn't think of Schnapp as being a breakout forward as Marchesson kicks it to himself. Slaloms through, paddled to the wall. Sheehan keeps this on the blue line. Sheehan drags through, gets to the slot, Sheehan. Across wanted Marcia Son and couldn't get to his forehand for the shot. As Yao's off the bench to keep it on, rings it around for Sheehan. Sheehan to the circle. 
Holds it, drops it for Amesbury. Winds up for the point. Shot saved, made, and the puck will bounce through. Amesbury in the corner, taking some punishment. Sheehan on his backhand, returns, fires, save, made, loose puck. Marchesson turned and fired. Hussey made another save. Thought about the Michigan, and that's knocked down. Stick comes out. What do we have here? Amesbury with the hit. This is going to be a penalty, and who's this against as they're going to separate Amesbury and Schnapp. They're going to try and make sure this stays clean. Wow. Yeah, Marcia's son. Let's see. Here, oh, Amesbury wants to go with Schnapp. The officials, I don't think they're going to let him. I don't think they're going to let him. Marcia's son is heading off to the box. I think they're going to call this a slash against Marcia's son. Yeah, Marcia's son, you know, took a little too long trying to do the Michigan, you know, get the puck settled and... He was thinking about it, but that allowed Carolina the opportunity to swoop in. Yeah, right there. Oh, boy. Oh. So there's the chop. Oh, and then the afterwards. The follow-up slash. Yeah, with the broken stick. Yeah. And Marchesan called for that. I mean, that could be penalties both ways. It's not. And Carolina will have their second power play of the night. They took a penalty on their first true power play attempt, so... 0 oh for 1, but with a truncated power play going against them as Ruiz and Panacek will be taking the face off. This is a big point in the game, reaching right about the middle point of the game. Gonzalez and Salak a bit quick jumping in. They're tossing Panacek from the dot. Schnapp, been much more of an offensive piece than I would have expected, heads to the face off dot. Face off one, and the Thunderbirds will set up. Kennedy, cross to the left, worth noting the Hattricks had the most shorthanded goals of any team in the league in the regular season, do not have one so far in these playoffs. Ruiz blocks the pass from Kennedy down. Kennedy will regain, runs to the circle, pulls up, off to Schnapp, plays it to the left, holds it and looks. Kennedy will receive it, and up the wall, the first 30 seconds of the power play gone by. Kennedy, Ruiz going to him, circle shot, save made by Wilson. Peshtuka takes the check from Gordy. Gonzalez trying to get this up, Bunnell did for a second, and what do we have? We've got a boarding penalty going against Carolina. So for the second time in this game, the Thunderbirds get a power play and throw it away, taking another penalty. It's Schnapp who's heading off for the boarding call. Yep, you know, that's, I, listen, I'm not uh, doing anything but stating the obvious here. You know, you can't be doing that. You, you had two power plays and you cough them both up. You know, pucks in the offensive zone. You know, I know you're battling and everything, but. That's a dumb penalty you to just, take. You just can't do that. So four on four and eventually the hat tricks will get an abbreviated power play themselves. Yeah, we'll hold it. We've got a minute and 10 seconds worth of four on four time as Kennedy will get it out beyond Lucas to Benedet. Kennedy with some room to glide in. Kennedy got to the slot, turn, shot, he scores. Both of Carolina's goals have come at four on four. It's Kennedy who gives the Thunderbirds the lead again. Yeah, that's a beautiful, beautiful play right there by Kennedy. And you're right, four on four is is uh, the charm for Carolina tonight, the uh, extra open ice. They have taken advantage of it on two different occasions. And the Hattricks again trail just about halfway through this second period. It's now two to one. Kennedy with his first goal of the playoff. So Firth and Kennedy both have been held out, held off the score sheet the entire postseason. They both have a goal tonight. As does McKittrick, he, he's another one. All three goal scorers have scored their first of the postseason. All right, 10.40 the time remaining. Hat tricks have to answer again. Gonzalez runs this on. Ford played up to the point for Xavier Abdella. Creates some space for himself. Leaves it for De Benedet to the slot. Rat McKittrick shot is blocked by Firth. McKittrick tied up. Keplinger will carry this out. Gets around De Benedet. Keplinger will run this on. Keplinger to the wall, shot on, save made by Brian Wilson. They're ruling it as an unassisted goal for Kennedy. So it was a nice rush and a nice finish. Yeah. 
That's a good looking play by Kennedy. And now the hat tricks have to dig down. You know, half this game has now gone by. Down one. Pretty imperative that they don't give up the next one. They have to get the next goal. They have to win the faceoff and get out of their own end. Shots are 16 apiece. Faceoff goes ahead to lock the shot. Got nothing on it. Bunnell had tied him up. Works it up to Panacek. He'll hold it and lob it deep. Bounces around the official. Salak sends Gordy down. I have no idea how that is not an elbowing call. Yeah, Continued tie up. Salak continue to throw some hits on Gordy. Sheehan will carry this out. Sheehan runs across the red line. Sheehan dips it to the wall. Sheehan to the circle. Holds up and creates some room. An abbreviated power play now as they will lose the offensive zone time. Puck lobbed out. Salak will ring it low. McDonald the hit. 30 seconds of power play time left to go for the hat tricks. Radcliffe will retrieve it in his own end of the ice. Across for Johnny Ruiz. Played it to the middle. Ruiz runs on. Ruiz streaking in. Ruiz the backhander. Shot save made. Rebound bounces. And they can't get to it. Kennedy tried to get this up and out. Kennedy shields and holds the puck well. Kennedy runs on to the circle. Kennedy wanted Butita and couldn't connect with him. McKittrick ahead for Ruiz. Ruiz shields the puck, pulls up, tried to whack at it. Kennedy will pick up the loose puck. Jared Yao, he'll take the hit. Puck is free, Sheehan turning. <laughs> Sheehan turns with it. McKittrick looking for some room, the shot save made, bounces to the glass. Robertson, McKittrick calls for it, and scores! Daniel McKittrick, goalless till now. He's got two tonight. We're tied again. Just reiterating what Billy McCreary said before the game. He just needs to get one. The weight comes off his shoulders. He's in a good spot here. He's just wide open. Hussey's out at the play, and McKittrick fires it into the empty net. This after the original shot. You said it deflected into the corner. It did off the face of Tucker Firth. It hit Firth directly in the face. He went down, so Carolina basically only had four skaters up on their skates. Firth was down and out of the play, and then Hussey ended up dr uh, drifting from the right side to the left, and McKittrick had the wide open net. Wilson put that in his glove. The officials are coming over to relay something to the, to the box. I wonder if that's just the scoring. Or no, that should take us to the under 10 media timeout, and yes, it does. We'll take it tied up at two apiece here in the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Ultimate limousine service here in Danbury is the region's premier limo service. You ever ride in a Bentley? Well, just give Ultimate Limo a call and they'll hook you up. Next time you travel, go in style with Ultimate Limousine, ultimatelimoct.com. This place has just absolutely erupted. Chris Lynch, a quick answer by the hat tricks, fell behind 2-1 and Daniel McKittrick ties the game at two apiece even though Somehow they, uh, the official scoring says Gordy Bennell scored that goal, but it was Daniel McKittrick all the way. I can confirm the assist. Riley Robertson had the primary one, and they've awarded a secondary assist to Jared Yao. It'd be his third point of the postseason. Robertson definitely had the primary assist on that one, from what I could tell on that. 
as they are still talking this over. I think that's what they're talking about right here is the official scoring on that goal. At least uh, that's the only thing I could think of right now. I mean, now. it was McKittrick all the way. I'm not, oh, even, yeah. I'm not even sure Gordy was on the ice. He wasn't. Uh, it's McKittrick's goal. It's his second of the game. And man, what a breakout performance he has had. And what a needed performance he has had. Patricks have been down 1-0 and 2-1, and he's had the answer both times. And if that play holds up for Riley Robertson, that's his fourth point of the playoffs. Yeah. He had one all regular season. Marchesson takes the pass, leaves it forward for Pamela on. Pamela on pulls up for it. Pam Marchesson turns the shot on net, saved me by Hussey. The kit trick, the goal, they're announcing it now in house. Tried to turn this on. Marchesson and Pamela on can't force the puck free. Row underneath board. Gonzalez at the hat trick logo. He'll ring it deep. Hussey will settle it. Hands off for Peavy. Marcius on, bothering him. And yep, Robertson and Yao's assist will hold up in the official scoring. Peavy to Hussey. Brendan, that is. Greg's still in net. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's good. He's not that good that he can cover two positions. McKittrick goes down. That is a tripping call all the way. Hattricks will set up. They've got a chance. McKittrick, they score! A delayed penalty, Brendan Dowler, the long range shot, and he has given the Hat Tricks the lead. 3-2 here in Hat City, and this place is going berserk. It's a delayed penalty. They got across, Ojik got tripped, it's tripping all day, and they immediately, Ojik threw it up to the point, the shot on, and found its way into the pipe. It's a seeing eye shot. I don't think that was tipped in by, it was McKittrick who was on the doorstep. Yeah. This will be Dowler's goal. Yeah, McKittrick immediately pointed at Dowler and said his goal, his goal. And give Dowler credit. He did not hesitate. That puck came to his stick and he caught Hussey moving, not set. And he was able to beat, them, beat him from long range. It's worth noting that negates the follow-up power play. But I don't think the Hattricks really care about that right now. They've got the lead. Here comes Ruiz, glides in, he'll throw it to the corner, Yao giving chase, Yao goes to the puck, that bounced hard off the Zamboni door, he went down, Grabenikov trying to carry this up and out, Radcliffe picks off the exit, Radcliffe at the circle, the shot save made by Hussey, just a pretty simple save made on that one. And, and Chris, again, and, and listen, I see this objectively, right? as best as I can. Yep. Yao comes hard to the net and and Hussey just, you know, he, he takes a double double fister with the stick at him, it, you know, and knocks him out. You say he got knocked down, he got knocked down because, you know, how's that not cross-checking against the goalie? Circle shot save made, rebound bounces to the slot. The assist being rewarded right now, they're listing it. I'm sure this will get changed, but they've awarded this as we've got a chance here. Marshall's on spinning with it. Ford will carry this out. McKittrick and Ojik getting the assists. Into PV turns, fires, looks for some play. It's Dowler's goal. He got the game winner in the series clincher against Binghamton. It's McKittrick's third point. He had three points in the prior seven games before this one. He's doubled the scoring output in one night. Again, you know, it's like Billy McCurry called it. I asked him, you know, earlier, at What's up with the kid? You know, is he okay? And it, yeah, he just needs one. He looks fine to me. Right? And again, you know, the change of lines. That line has been on fire tonight with the opportunities and, of course, with a hand in all three goals. Ojik waits for it against the Carolina bench. DeBenedet will glide in. Lucas DeBenedet drops it for McKittrick. Turns through. McKittrick, lively, sits against the apron of the goal. In tight. Wanted. DeBenedet caught his stick instead of his skate. Up top, Gonzalez steps in, creates some room, backhand shot, blocked by Dawson Baker, flutters behind the goal. Ojik uses his muscle, tries to get the puck free, and did for a second. Keplinger will get this up to Gonzalez, who whacks it deep. Susie holds it. We've got a whistle. Ojik didn't, he jumped across the line too quickly. It'll be an offsides. 
And you saw it on that shift too. Who is the best player on the ice again? McKittrick. Daniel McKittrick. He's he is, running. He is really, really playing a confident game right now. Followed pretty closely, I'd say, by Lucas DeBenedet. And DeBenedet, who's been a terror the entire postseason, having himself a night as well. Ojik is, has played himself a strong, strong game as well. Now they got to get this line going, Ratcliffe, Ruiz, and Benel. It surprises me that the captain of the team, the 60-point scorer this season in Johnny Ruiz, doesn't have a point yet in these finals, but they're in the lead right now. And they certainly will be happy with that. Now to defend, Kennedy We've got the second Carolina goal ahead for Schnapp. McDonald will whip this out. Doesn't have the steam. The chance is the typical one in soccer games, the Ole. Schnapp got a stick on it. Dowler runs on. Dowler will play it behind. Long pass ahead for Bunnell. Kennedy pinching. Thunderbirds trying to keep this in. They do. An attacking corner. Rowe and Kennedy swap spots. Rowe turns and fires. He caught Dowler. Butita back up to Rowe against the half boards. Leaves it low. Whacked at by Dowler. Kennedy pinching. They'll leave it low for Butita. 4.38, the time remaining in the second. Top of the circle drops off for Grabenikov. Kennedy off the glass. This puck will bounce. Radcliffe tried to play it. He'll race for it, wrestling with Butita. Got to it first. Left low, picked off by Ruiz. Ruiz will run it forward. Ruiz winds up, tried to hammer it, caught his man. Dips through. Ruiz handles. Ruiz couldn't get through Butita. Amesbury and Marchesson jumping on the puck. Bounces on the ledge of the boards. 4-10 to go in the second. And we've seen this threesome a, a few shifts, and they really have grinded it well. Amesbury, Marchesson, and Sheehan, the three biggest forwards out there together. And Marchesson has been, he's thrown a couple of like pretty good offensive sequences together. Yeah, he, he's, he's played, a, he hasn't scored, but he's certainly playing his best game of the series, there's no doubt. And he and Sheehan are showing a little bit of chemistry, but I like when they put Amesbury on that line. That is a good four-checking threesome. Oh, they want it up top for Sheehan. Out comes Panacek. Runs on to the circle, looks for the shot. It's wide of Wilson. PV at the point, glides on Wilson, the stick save. Salak tried to whack it deep. Marchesson tried to get it out. PV throws his hip into it. Amesbury got it out. It's a little bit too far for Sheehan, who's hopping off for DeBenedet. Long pass ahead. Had Peshtuka, couldn't play it cleanly, shot over the crossbar. Puck settles at the circle. DeBenedet trying to get this up and out. DeBenedet will do so, but not without some serious fight. Still with it, falling down, no trip. Just lost his balance. Ojik to the corner. Ojik swoops in for it. Pirouette, shot on, goes across the crease. I don't think Hussey saw that at all. DeBenedet at the circle, up top for Gonzalez, looks for the shot, flutters wide, and to the end boards. Tucker Firth trying to get this up, gets hip-checked by McKittrick, who's playing with a lot of confidence. Tried to set up, Salak blocked down Gonzalez's pass attempt. DeBenedet will walk it in, circle shot over the crossbar. Ojik, and PV collide here. Ojik shields it well, Ojik turns, has McDonald. Point shot, save made by Hussey with 2.26 left to go. Hattrick's playing their best offensive period as Ojik and Salak being separated by the officials. We'll take a breather, come back in a moment. 3-2, Dan Murray in the lead here on the Dan Murray Hattrick's YouTube channel. If you want food and fun, J.J. Sachs in Brookfield features burgers, wings, shakes, ice cream, and mini golf. Check out the menu and spoil yourself. Take the trip down Federal Road and stack it at J.J. Stacks. 226 to play period two. He's Chris Lynch. I'm Jim Cerny. Hat tricks three and the Thunderbirds two here in game three of the Commissioner's Cup Championship Series. 
And Chris, we were just saying off air during the commercial, this is a good game. Yep. Two it, teams, two really good teams, really playing well. A lively crowd. It's exactly what you want to see in a championship environment. Puck runs away. Yao will get there. There's no icing. I think the Hattricks played it before. Yao goes down. Thunderbirds sticked away. I think Bunnell got a piece of that one. Pamela Leon tumbles down. No penalty called for. Gets down to Ford. Ford held up. Pamela Leon. That's the outlet. Radcliffe takes on three defenders by himself. He'll ring it around. Kennedy's there for it. Pamela Leon harassing Kennedy on defense. Kennedy had one beautiful run through goal. Almost had another setup chance as that tipped a Thunderbird stick. Martin's back for it. Sheehan bearing down on him, Ford. A minute 35 left to go. Hattricks with two goals here in the period. Fell down two to one. Sheehan's stick comes clean out of his hands. Marsha Son will play it behind him for Gonzalez. Uh, it was slashed out of his hands and he was looking for the penalty, he didn't get it. Abdella will leave it behind him for Gonzalez. We come up on the last minute of the second period. He wants the pass ahead for Marchesson. Still no points in the finals for Michael Marchesson. Sheehan across for Johnny Ruiz. Winds up, shoots it. Glove saved by Hussey. Another good save by Hussey in this game. Yep, had no traffic in front of him, so he saw it cleanly. But I like that Johnny aggressively took the shot. Didn't He wasn't looking to pass it there. He had a lane, and he snapped a good shot on net. I thought that and that one power play opportunity where he, he, he shifted into another gear, split the defense, and then got a shot on goal. I thought those were his two best opportunities so far tonight. Ojik tying up on the faceoff with Panacek. Thunderbirds will win it. Abdella settles it in his skates as Gonzalez is on his hip. Long ahead, Ojik gliding on. Ojik is playing the fastest game and also willing to throw his weight around. Ojik wanted to get it to McKittrick. Up top to Gonzalez, shot just a little bit wide. De Benedet carries through. De Benedet turns, fires. His shot is blocked down by Kennedy and just flutters softly into Hussey's glove. Yeah, it's still a good save though. I, you know, I know it ends up coming really slowly at him. But don't forget, you know, the goalie is moving one way and he's expecting you know, the shot to come, the puck to come to him at a certain speed, and it hits Kennedy in front, and all of a sudden really slows down. So it's, you know, the ball knuckles, or the puck knuckles, and it bounces. So it's still a good job there by Hussey, but a good block by Kennedy. Uh, change of direction shots are kind of nightmares for goaltenders to try and play. Absolutely. Firth. Hit by McKittrick to Benedette will knock it down. Wants the pass for Ojik. It's too far for him. He'll run to the wall and get it. Poked out by Panacek. Rung deep. Hattricks are on sides, but only 20 seconds left. Firth will hold it. Look for one more rush. This is an icing call. That's a bit of a mistake by Carolina. Hattricks will get an offensive zone faceoff with 15 seconds left. They'll throw Ruiz. Benell, Radcliffe, McDonald, and Robertson on the ice. Yep, you put your best face-off guy out there, the captain, Johnny Ruiz. Listen, you know, they ice it. Now you get a face-off in the offensive zone. Hopefully you create, a, you know, an opportunity, a scoring opportunity off of it here in the dying seconds. Puck sits, tied up. They'll play it backwards. Too high over Salak. Robertson will run down. They'll get another offensive zone face-off off a second straight icing with 8.7 left. And we should point out in the second intermission, Chris will... Sit down with another one of the Danbury Hattricks players. Probably Brendan Dowler. We'll Hopefully Brendan Dowler, local kid. Yep. Two huge goals in these postseason, in this postseason. Got the game winner against Binghamton. Faceoff shot blocked. Firth took the brunt of that vulcanized rubber. Puck thrown on. Shot scores! Jacob Radcliffe for to Danbury with two seconds left. Before the intermission, the roof's about to blow off this place. What did I tell you? The icings, final seconds, win a faceoff, get a scoring opportunity, and in this case, not just the opportunity, but Radcliffe alone in the slot buries it, and that is a huge goal for the hat tricks in the dying seconds of the period. It's Radcliffe's sixth goal of these playoffs 
The New Zealand man from Canterbury has been a terror. He's now tied with Marcia Son for the team lead in the postseason. Schnapp and Ruiz tying and jostling and pushing on a wrestling match off the faceoff. The officials are just gonna try and separate everybody and send them to the locker room. Dan Burry has gotta be feeling great about themselves as the time has run out on the second period. It's 4-2 at Tricks in the lead. Johnny's getting an assist as well. That's his first point of the playoffs. Ruiz, hype in the crowd. Ruiz will be heading off. He'll wait along with Gonzalez. This has been a bit of a tradition that the letter wearers will meet everybody as they head off the ice together at the end of each period. By far and away, after they gave up the Kennedy goal, that was far and away the best period the Hattricks have played all finals. Uh, I mean, there's no doubt. You know, three huge goals in the period. You know, the key, I mean, there are a lot of keys here. Obviously, you score with 2.3 seconds left. That's a massive goal. But to me, the key was two minutes after Kennedy gives them the goal, and it goes, now the Hattricks are down 2-1 halfway through this game, a must win. McKittrick scores again. Huge, Chris. It wasn't two minutes didn't become five minutes, it didn't become ten minutes. It was two minutes after that goal. And then Dowler scores another minute later. And all of a sudden, within an eye blink, you go from 2-1 down to 3-2 up. And then you get the Ratcliffe goal in the final seconds. Again, the back-to-back icings by Carolina, and the Hattricks made them pay. An unbelievable setup as the Hattricks Take the lead into intermission, their biggest lead of the finals. Four to their advantage with their best period by far. McKittrick getting two more points. We're gonna keep things here for the festivities on ice during the intermission. Jim and I will take a breather. We'll come back with words from some of the Hattricks players. Quick pause, back in a minute. Here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. We've got two legends Thanks. 
Chuck Mercer got the offer of the day on Dan Bray's disposal of Chuck and Puck. Two hundred dollar cash prize. If you throw your puck into the bucket, you are going to be part of the prize pool. Let's see. Three, two, one. Chuck and Puck. Fans, Chuck and Puck is sponsored by Todd Maserati, Alpha Romeo, and Danbury. For 35 years, the Bennett family has been putting this community behind the wheel of quality automotive vehicles. Also, remember, if you're interested in becoming a Bennett family, that means you're going to host the junior hat tricks at your house. Maybe you've got a spare bedroom, a basement, a trailer. You get paid $650, you get free half season tickets, and it's a lot of fun. You are all winners. 
Jim Cerny with you from Danbury Arena. After 40 minutes of play, the Hattricks lead the Carolina Thunderbirds 4-2 in game three of the Commissioner's Cup Championship Series. Of course, you're a Hattrick fan. You know that this is a must win after the Hattricks dropped the first two games of this best of five series on the road last weekend in Carolina. The Hattricks trailed 1-0 in the first period, came back to tie it, trailed 2-1 in the second period and got the tying goal two minutes later daniel mckittrick's second of the game then brendan dowler gave them the gave them the lead at 12 43 and then it was jacob ratcliffe with 2.3 seconds remaining in the period that really scored a mammoth goal for the hat trick so they lead it four to two moments ago chris lynch caught up with brendan dowler Second intermission, Patrick's lead 4-2, to two, and I'm here with Patrick defenseman Brendan Dowler. And Brendan, we're giving the team a go-ahead goal again. I just want to get your thoughts on how that play developed and what you saw. And especially, it was a delayed penalty that was taken right up, and immediately you guys turn around and put a shot on the goal. Yeah, just trying to get anything in the net and, uh, you know, hope to get a rebound or a guy getting a puck or getting a stick on it too. So, uh, just trying to get any anything to the net there. And talk about the life that Danny Kittrick has been playing with. Didn't have a goal in the postseason before tonight, has two tonight. What's he been doing differently where he's got more life and he's got more skating to right now? Jeez, I mean, you know, uh, guys like that, he's got a hell of a lot of talent and, uh, you know, it just comes. It, can't be on it all the time, and uh, he's coming in in the big, big uh, games here, so it's it's awesome to see. And how big is it getting a goal in the final seconds to go up by multiple goals before the intermission time? Oh, it's huge. It gives a lot, of, it gives a, a lot of life there, and um, gives us something to kind of pump up and get ready to the uh, the next uh, period there. So, what's the feeling of the guys going into the third period? Oh, we're buzzing. We're ready for it. Third period's on the way. Brendan Dowler, thank you so much. Good luck. Thank to you. you. Appreciate it. That's Chris Lynch with Brendan Dowler, who's got himself a goal and an assist. And this one tonight, a guy that scored six goals in the regular season, had 15 points, and he's got himself a two-pointer tonight in a big one for the Hattricks. And he is only involved in big goals, it appears, because he scored the series winner, of course, a couple weeks ago against the Binghamton Black Bears in the second round. And now he's got a huge one tonight. They gave the Hattricks their first lead in this game, his second of the playoffs coming at 12:43 of that second period in the hat tricks right now, leading it four to two. They're up in shots 25-16 in that second period. Danbury outshot Carolina 14 to nine. And again, the mammoth goal coming with 2.3 seconds left. Ratcliffe is sixth of the playoffs from Ruiz. And that gives the hat tricks their first multiple goal lead in this series to this point. They not led by more than one goal in either of the first two games. Tonight, they lead it by two after 40 minutes of play. When we return, Chris and I will set the stage for the third period here tonight. Hattricks four, Thunderbirds two after two.
Second intermission drawing to a close. 4-2 Danbury in the lead over the Carolina Thunderbirds trying to get their first win of the series. All the hat tricks can do is force a game on Saturday night. Here at the Danbury Ice Arena, they are 20 minutes away from doing that. Alongside my partner in crime, Jim Cerny, I'm Chris Lynch, and Jim, we noted right before we headed off to break, that was the best period the Hattricks have played all series. They have to do it again yes, here they in the do. third. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Carolina's not going away. Listen, in their minds, even though they're trailing here by two, they could be 20 minutes away from winning the championship. You know, you get it, you pop a quick one here and all of a sudden it's back to a one goal game and the pressure shifts onto the shoulders of the hat trick. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Danbury certainly playing much more Danbury hat trick hockey. You know, in the first period, we, we talked about it, but certainly in the second period, it just seems a couple guys that had been struggling and the team as a whole just seemed more loose. And they were back to just playing their, their style, their brand of hockey dictating a lot of the action, playing with pace, playing physically, and for the most part, playing a pretty smart game to this point through 40 minutes. But again, I'm, I'm taking nothing away from the opposition because Carolina is playing a solid game as well. I know they've given up four, but they're playing a good game as well, and they're certainly far from out of this one. Hat tricks going from left to right across your internet waves. In the home of orange jerseys. They are so far a perfect 3-0 and o here on home ice in these playoffs. And, and a perfect 2 I'm sorry to yep, catch no up. Worries. And a perfect 2-0 and o this year in elimination games, yep. of which, of course, this is one. This is one. They're trying to go to 3-0 and o in elimination matchups, trying to go to 4-0 and o here on home ice. 24-2-2 and two here at the Danbury Ice Arena. This has been one of the hardest places to win a professional hockey game since the hat tricks came into existence in 2019. Johnny Ruiz and Hussey on the dot. The faceoff is won by Ruiz. The puck is dropped. We're underway for the third and final period of regulation time here in game three. Long pass ahead, whacked up by Dowler, tries to settle it. Backhand shot by Rowe. He caught Putita on the way in. Save made by Wilson. He'll swallow it up. And we get the first shot and stop of the period just 17 seconds in. Yeah, Carolina comes in and you know, it looked like the first shot was going to be a good scoring opportunity, but a good block in front by the hat tricks. But then, you know, Wilson had slid over and, you know, he had to make sure that he had that uh, the, the corner there covered because the puck came right back to the shooter and you got a quick second opportunity, but Wilson swallowed it up. Face off one by Ruiz. Good couple of draws up to the point. Looking for some room to work with. Shot knocked into Wilson's glove. Got tipped by Ford on the way in. Kennedy with a good shot. The more I see of Joe Kennedy, the more I think, man, that guy is quite a hockey player. Yeah, and you know, that's the thing about Carolina. We talked about it in the open. You know, they're a deep team. They're not just Gus Ford. You know, this is a deep, deep team. And you see it, you know, Kennedy... You know, he's a defenseman, but he's a guy that moves the puck well, can move up and play forward. He's one of those guys, you know, that can be a defenseman or a forward. You know, solid, solid guy. But again, he, you know, he's like a third, fourth option. I wonder how and he's good. I wonder how effective he'd be as a politician <laughs> with the last name Kennedy. <laughs> Joe Kennedy at that. Yes, yeah, indeed. Absolutely. The, the patriarch himself. Uh, he's not from Massachusetts, though, so. No, <laughs> this, this Joe Kennedy is not. This one isn't, no. Yes. Actually, one of my father's classmates at Harvard, Caroline Kennedy. Oh, there you go. Yeah. All the connections you make in the Ivy League. Puck rung deep for Sheehan turning. McKittrick off the bench. Up to Jared Yao at the blue line. Fumbles it. Thunderbirds at two on two. Ford on the right to the circle. Ford shot wide. Rebound bounces. Kettlinger had a great chance. He just couldn't quite control it. On the shot, Ford up to Keplinger, and Wilson makes the save. It's a bad turnover by the hat tricks, but Brian Wilson bails him out of it. Yeah, you know, probably you know, a little bit of a uh, you know a teaching moment there for Billy McCreary and the hat tricks. Got the puck in the offensive zone at the circle. Get it on net or get it behind the net. 
don't be sending the puck back towards the blue line. Bad things could happen, and it did. It led to a partial two-on-one break for Carolina. Firth plays this in. Yeah, will block it down before it had a chance to turn into icing. Robertson, the long pass ahead, kicked off of Ojic's stick to Benedette. Goes to the wall, dips through a hit, backhand shot over the glove of Hussey. Robertson turns, plays it up to the circle. Ojic can't control it cleanly. McKittrick's there for it, creates some space. to Benedette turns at the circle. He has been a terror all playoffs and has created a number of good chances. to Benedette gets crunched. Loose puck, McKittrick there for it. to Benedette back to his feet, turns, poked off his stick by Panacek, and Peavy will kick it. They'll get the out. It's good offensive shift, even though they're not able to be rewarded with anything. Firth, across the blue line, pulls up, needs help. Salak fumbles it. Yao plays it out. McKittrick got to it. McKittrick will ring it in from the red line and hop off. They had been on the ice for a while together. <coughs> Excuse me. McDonald will pick off the pass across the red line. McDonald will backhand this one deep, knocked down and covered. Hussey took a minute to decide and finally decided to just put it away. Yeah, and that could have been a dangerous, you know, thing uh, as well as the puck was just flipped in by the hat tricks. You know, went right off the stick of the Carolina defenseman and kind of redirected on net. And Hussey had to be alert. He was, and the faceoff will be to his left. Two and a half minutes into the third, Hattrick's leading by two. Puck sits against the corner wall. Ruiz trying to get to it. It runs away from him. Martin, out of room. Thrown to the blue line. McDonald's there for it. He'll ring it deep into the corner. Did that catch the... Protective netting, that flew its way out. It's not gonna be a delay of game, it just kind of found its way out in a weird spot. I think it caught like, I, I, right at the top of the glass. Right, I thought it hit the top of the glass because you saw that it it kind of, it was on a line drive and then it, it took off. Yeah. You know, at the end up into the netting. And again, to their credit, the officials doing the right thing. They discussed it and they decide, they agree with Jim and Chris that it did hit <laughs> the top of the glass. I think the officials are, ah, Yao and Robertson were trying to hop on and they're, they're sending Abdella and Gonzalez back on, not allowing the hat tricks for a change. And Amesbury and Schnapp having a little conversation at the red line. Amesbury had thought about dropping the mitts as Sheen is being tossed from the faceoff dot. Marchesson will hop on and win it cleanly. Marchesson having a pretty decent game faceoff wise. Abdella will hold it, Gonzalez back for it. Amesbury called for it, bounces off his stick. They finally get Yao on. They'll wait for another second before they can get Robertson on the ice. Sheehan tips it low. Marcius on. They got it out. Schnapp ahead of the play. Schnapp will hold it, play it backwards to Brandon Hussey. Hard check. Sheehan lays the lumber on Kennedy. Pitches it over the middle. Marcius on. Tried to control it. Grabenikov there for it. Turns and looks for it. Abdella picks it off. Left it for Marcius on. Gets around one man. Marcius on will just leave it deep. His shift comes to a conclusion. A pretty calm opening to the third period. Uh, a couple good scoring opportunities yeah. early for Carolina. Schnapp the backhander. Butita, bring it around again. Schnapp's there for it. Actually, no, the puck ran too far away from him. Peavy at the red line across for Kennedy. Ojic gliding on. Almost the first four minutes gone by to Benedict. And McKittrick almost forced the turnover. Hussey will work it deep. Robertson and Salak on top of it. Robertson draws the tripping call. This will be a penalty against Carolina. McDonald will get this out. Wilson will head off. Last time there was a delayed penalty. Hattrick's got a goal. Let's see what they do with it. Not a thing. They'll get the touch up. And Danbury will get their first full power play of the game. They're 0 for 2, but both of those are truncated penalties or truncated power plays, I should say, after Carolina threw a power play chance away. Yep, the, this, you know, big opportunity here for the hat tricks. Salak just got his stick into the skates of Robertson as Robertson was pulling away and he went down. You know, obvious call right in front of the official and the hat tricks 4-11 into the third period, head to the power play. They have one power play goal so far this series. It's a chance to go up by three. Gordy Bennell got that lone power play goal in the first game. Going into the series, they were converting at a 33% success rate. Down a little bit, but still 
a pretty effective power play and an increase from their regular season rate. Ruiz hands off for Marchesson, got to the circle. He'll pull up and wait for everyone to get into the offensive end. A tripping call again against Jan Salak. Marchesson doesn't connect with it. Comes out to neutral, Schnapp had his stick in the way. I've said a lot of complimentary things about Schnapp throughout the course of this game. He's played a good game. Yes, he has. Marchesson holds it across for Ruiz. Into the blue line, Ruiz creates some space. Ruiz shot, sailed it wide. I think probably got hit by a Thunderbird stick as well. De Benedette wanted the wrap, didn't have the angle. Turns it at the circle. Wanted it low over the circle and loved it. Picked off, wanted it ahead for Peavy. Ruiz and Marchesson there for it. Marchesson runs on. McDonald, they couldn't get it to him. McDonald will run to him. Got a minute left to go on this power play. Hattrick's up 4-2, looking for the fifth goal. Thunderbirds trying to get this out, and they will. Comes all the way down to Wilson's end. They'll get the second unit on. Jared Yao will sprint this out. Ojik over the middle. No icing called for here as McKittrick can't keep it in. Sheehan has to run back for it. Jared Yao, 35 seconds of power play time left to go. Rung deep, Hussey came out of his net. The puck caught that bounce in that corner boards. Sheehan tried to control it. Breakaway chance for Panacek. Sprints ahead. Wilson, well out of his net. Has to get back in. Wilson still down. Panacek tried for Dawson Baker and couldn't connect with him. Sheehan ahead. Sheehan runs. Drops it for Ojek. Across for McKittrick. To the slot. McKittrick the shot just wide of the goal post. Sheehan to the circle. Ran it a bit too long, the hat-trick power play unsuccessful. Ojek turns, fires, save made by Hussey. Came well to the top of his crease. Martin runs this over the red line. Martin glides on, takes on Abdella. Turns, drops the pass, Ojek with the takeaway. He'll pitch it over the middle. Amesbury running out off the bench. Amesbury will play this deep. A frantic sequence. Keplinger will leave it in. Wilson out of his net. Brian Wilson is incredibly fortunate that they could not connect on that pass while he came out a bit too aggressively to play it. Puck to the circle. Gus Ford will leave it deep for Salak, who's fresh out of the box. Keplinger tied up with Abdella. Salak wrestling with Gonzalez. Ruiz will take this puck away. Drops it behind him. Xavier Abdella there to act as a release valve for Gonzalez. Radcliffe has got the fourth goal. Wants the pass ahead, connects with Amesbury, got it over the blue line. Bounced up. Keplinger can't do anything with it. Abdella. Cross for McDonald. Marchesson will run this over the red line. Across the blue, Marchesson drops it for Sheehan. Up top, turns, fires. Shot got blocked before it ever got on net. Robertson pinching in. Low for Marchesson. Turns it on his back end. Marchesson handles it. Save made by Hussey, right in tight. McDonald wanted it rung around. Ford's there to pick off the pass. Shots are now 28 to 17. Danbury opening up a shot advantage in Carolina. Needing to get some offensive chances. Shot on by Ford, save made by Brian Wilson. That'll take us to the under 15. 4 to Danbury here in the third period. Quick pause back in a moment from the Danbury Ice Arena. TK's American Cafe is located on White Street in Danbury. Stop by TK's to try one of their 76 amazing wings flavors. Check them out online, tksamericancafe.com. Boy, that was a scrambly, frightening moment for Brian Wilson, who got caught in no man's land. He waited, waited too long before he came out after that puck on what was a breakaway there by, I believe it was 
uh, Brendan Hussey. Yeah, he got so lucky that the pass to Dawson Baker did not connect. Yes, that was a wide open gimme net right there. Ojik to McKittrick running on McKittrick, the shot save made by Hussey off his blocker. Out comes Kennedy. Kennedy, the pass across for Panacek to the circle. Leaves it for Salak. De Benedet knocks it down. McKittrick gets on. Two on one with Tobias Ojik. Across the blue line. Ojik winds up for the blast. He sails it too high. Puck bounces up to the point. Panacek picked it off from De Benedet. Panacek runs it over the red line. Glides into the attacking end. Top of the circle. Shot saved made by Wilson. And he allows no rebound. Abdella trading shoves with Panacek and the officials. Have to separate them. Abdella. Again, Abdella and Panacek being separated. Abdella hot. Panacek as well. I don't think they're going to call a penalty on this. Just a simple knock it off there, boys. You know, Abdella, sometimes, you know, if you're only looking at the score sheet and statistics and all that, you can overlook a guy like that. He's so set, he's such a veteran, steady presence back there, both emotionally and how he plays on the ice. And what a solid veteran defense pairing he and Kyle Gonzalez put, put together. Bunnell can't get the pass ahead to Ruiz, was cheating across the blue line, wanted the breakaway, Baker turns, fires, his shot gets blocked by Abdella. Speaking of you know, positive things about Xavier Abdella, he's such a responsible player. Spent some time in the SPHL with the mess that was the Vermilion County Bobcats. Baker steps into the shot, blocked. Ruiz will clear it to the boards. What a good play by Johnny Ruiz. Smart play, saw where it was going and just had to get it out of danger. Peavy tries to leave it deep. Gonzalez picks off the pass intended for Ford. Flies it to the middle. Ford has one assist and has a, a couple of breakaway chances. Puck will bounce out off of, I think Abdella got it last. Actually, no, I think they're going to say Baker got it last, so it'll be a neutral zone face off. Yeah, they, such a good play by Johnny. You know, the puck comes through, gets blocked in front, and it's laying right there, right? You know, for Carolina to get a great scoring chance because Wilson was scrambling, and the puck gets swiped out of there so quickly into a safe spot. At first, I thought it was a defenseman. I'm like, oh, is that Abdello Gonzalez? No, it's Johnny Ruiz back like a third defenseman. He's a very responsible captain of this team as Pamela Leon lays the hit, almost forces the turnover. Well, especially now, 4-2, game three, third period. Buck bounces across the open crease. McDonald will fly this out. This is on net, no icing. 10, 20 of the time remaining. Danbury in the lead, 4-2. Long pass ahead. It's hit by McDonald in neutral ice and hits the protective netting up top. McDonald clipped Hussey on the way across. Hard collision there. What are we gonna have here? Yeah, it's just gonna be a face off outside the hat trick blue line. And the official was asking for another puck as well. Yeah. So that's yeah. all that was. Yeah, puck went all the way over Wilson's head and into the netting. 10-13 to play here in the third period. Must win for the hat tricks and they lead it four to two. De Benedet and Hussey. Hussey a regular face off man. De Benedet wins it. Danbury struggled so mightily in the faceoff dot in the first two games. They have been much better here on home ice in the dot. Firth got the game's first goal, plays it around the boards, up for Schnapp. Over the middle, connects with Butita, at least initially. Hooked off by Dowler, who has the current game-winning goal. Away from McKittrick. Firth comes over for it. Can't pick it off. Schnapp across the rabbit logo at center ice. Schnapp drops the pass for Butita. Wants it in tight. Hussey the shot save made by Brian Wilson. Schnapp knocks down Yao in the crease. That'll draw a penalty, no doubt about that one. Kennedy into Benedette throwing hands as well. <laughs> Yao got crunched. Yeah, he absolutely got laid out. He hit the crossbar as well. We'll take a breather as Amy Schneider, the head athletic trainer of the Hattricks, attends to Jared. Yeah, we'll take a breather. Come back in a minute with the full scoring here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. 4-2 Danbury in the lead.
Folks, the Danbury Hat Tricks are more than just the professional team here. They operate two levels of junior hockey in the North American Hockey League and the NA3HL. And we are looking for billet parents to help these youngsters achieve their hockey dreams. Already just this past week, one player from each of these teams has committed to play college hockey. Connecticut College and the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point, competitive NCAA Division III schools. One player has gone on to play at the University of Maine out of this team and played at the World Junior. So if you want to be a part of making a young junior hockey player's dreams come true, inquire to search her at hermitdanburyhattricks.com to ask about becoming a billet parent with the Danbury Junior Hattricks. 9.39, the time to go. I really can't say enough about how much the billet parents do to make a junior hockey oh, yeah. operation run. Yep, and... and as players move on and they become professionals and you know certainly I see it in the NHL all the time these guys talk about their billet families all you know years later 15 years later they're still talking about their billet families and how they feel that they have multiple families they have their family you know their biological family and the billet families that you know where they shared homes with it's just an awesome giving thing to be able to do Back here on the ice sheet, Jared Yao has been assessed a two-minute minor penalty as for his schnapp. draw on that. Schnapp as well. So they're going to call this two-minute matchings. I and, think uh, they are anyway. Yeah. No, they're calling only the penalty kill. Yao's the only one who got a penalty that results in time on the clock. So for some odd reason, after all of that, Carolina gets a power play. That's got to be the most painful power play or penalty that Jared Yao's ever taken. How? Well, so it looks like double minor against Yao and probably a single minor against Schnapp. No. Amesbury is going over to serve the part of the minor penalty that's just the two. Hattricks, a big penalty kill. Carolina has twice gotten power plays and thrown it away both times with penalties in the middle of their power play chances. It's a two minute roughing call against Schnapp. Peshtuka will step into it, drop it for Salak. Turns it on his backhand, Salak. Hands it off for Panacek. Panacek, pardon. Panacek and Peshtuka will swap spots. Circle shot blocked down. Benel trying to get this out. Robertson can't do so. Nikitrick will off his backhander. And flutters at the length of the ice. First 40 seconds of the power play gone by. Big chance for Carolina to get back into this one. Puck rung around the boards. Gonzalez trying to get to it first and did, but couldn't get much on the clearing attempt. Kennedy. Going to leave it low. Peshtuka up to the blue line. Panacek holds it. Steps into some space. Panacek turns, fires. Puck got blocked before it ever got on net. Off the glass and out. Kennedy couldn't play it. Goes all the way down to Hussey. Coming up on the final stretch of the game, 45 seconds of power play time left to go for the Thunderbirds. 0 for on the night so far. They're intent on at least getting the full length of their power play time. Keplinger spins out of the hit. Ford winds up, looks for the shot on net. Baker tried the tip. It goes wide of Wilson's net by just a little bit. Lucas Rowe up to Ford. Ford steps into it, fakes the shot. Low for Baker at the circle. Fumbles it back up for Ford at the top. Ford to Baker. 18 seconds left. Baker swaps spots with Ford. Firth was calling for it. Hands off to Ford. Walks the line. Keplinger diving across was McDonald to deny the shot. Baker. Some room. Baker turns. Hands off for Keplinger. Top of the circle. The shot blocked by McDonald before it got on net. And the hat tricks have killed a two minute penalty. Amesbury out of the box. They'll play it up for Rowe. Across to the circle, the shot blocked by Gordy Bunnell. We don't track how many shots get counted, but I would love to see how many shots the Danbury Hattricks blocked on this penalty kill and follow-up offensive sequence. Yeah, they, they were terrific, and you saw Carolina tried to stay as patient as they could, but they had no shooting nor passing lanes, Chris. Hattricks were so, did such a good job about filling the box in front of their goaltender. And, you know, Carolina, when they did attempt shots, none of them were getting through because the hat tricks were there to block them. 
really a terrific penalty kill by the hat tricks. And listen, they have blocked a ton of shots in this game tonight. That's a lot of punishment that their bodies have taken. Uh, yes, it is. And if they win this game, congratulations. Your reward is you get to play this same team tomorrow again. Yeah, in another must win. Uh, guess what, they'll sign up for that. Happily so. Turnover here, can't complete it. McKittrick, the long pass ahead to Benedette. Controls it, glides in two on two. Creates some space, Benedette turns, his shot is blocked upstairs. The hat trick fans enjoying the lively atmosphere here. There's actually a Carolina fan who is being escorted out by the police officers. I, I don't know what she did, but. Something clearly went down. Yeah, she's being escorted out by three police officers wearing a schnapp jersey. That seems kind of apropos. Well, just reporting what we're seeing here. Yes, exactly. And Yep, heading to the exit. Faceoff will be to the left of Greg Hussey with 7.07 to play, and the hat trick still leading 4-2. to Ruiz hopping on the faceoff dot against Hussey. These two have been the most regular faceoff combatants. Hussey wins this one. Puck sits against the boards. Hat trick would be fine just keeping it right here. The clock is there, friend. It is Carolina's enemy right now. Jared Yao takes this into the boards. Ruiz tries to create some space. A couple of guys hit on Amesbury, Ruiz turned it across the crease, Radcliffe there for it. Floated over the head of Grabenikov. Della retreats across. McDonald looking for the long pass ahead. Icing's gonna be waved off by Daniel Amesbury winning the foot race. Puck bounces, Amesbury, a shot on goal. Daniel Amesbury gets knocked down and hit again by the goalie behind the play. And now they're gonna call the whistle to signal it dead. What do we have here? Amesbury's just gonna head off. Greg Hussey threw his glove in Daniel Amesbury's head. You know, we've mentioned it a few times tonight. Hussey is a very physical goaltender. And I, I thought that he could have taken a couple minors in this game. Blocked by Schnapp, yep, that's there. There, there it is. No penalty, I don't think. I don't, they haven't signaled anything yet. The officials are just trying to keep the team separate for right now. I will give Amesbury credit. He didn't retaliate. He did not retaliate. He's been in a couple situations that could have gone one way or the other. And he kept it on the right side of the line. And somehow this is going to be a face-off in the defensive end. Yeah, could they, they blew the whistle when the puck was in the Hattricks end of the ice. All right, so Hattricks will have some work to do in their end. Panacek Billy, and Billy Sheehan. McCreary, sorry to cut you off. Billy yeah. McCreary patting Amesbury on the back as if to say, hey, listen, good work, get the goalie's grill, don't take a penalty, win, win, win. And by the way, that was after an excellent, excellent wrap shot around. attempt yeah. and wraparound. Amesbury has had a great offensive game. He just hadn't been rewarded with anything yet. Yeah, he's played very, very well. Board up top, PV shot. It's wide of Wilson. Gonzalez to the loose puck. Off for Pamelaon, who tipped it. Out to neutral space. It doesn't have the steam to turn into an icing. Board receives the long pass in neutral territory. Runs on. Puck will bounce off of Board's stick. Abdella ties him up. Rowe coming over to help him out. Sheehan. Picks the puck up in the slot. Three on two, rush for the hat tricks. Sheehan running on. Through for Pamela Leon. Wants it for McDonald, who winds up and save made by Hussey. Hussey's best save of the night. A three on two, perfectly played by the hat tricks. What a save by Hussey. Row the backhander. Wilson makes a save on that one. Keplinger will turn and play it up to the circle. Row can't do much of anything with it. Sheehan will run this out. Sheehan has Marcia on. We'll fly it up over the blue line and over McKittrick's head. And that is an icing call with 5'11". That's a mistake on that icing call. It already cost the hat tricks, or sorry, cost the Thunderbirds when they did too many icing calls. And now the hat tricks are playing with a bit of fire as you're getting later on into the third. Yeah, you don't want to be doing that. And, and I know that line was out there for a while. They were tired. And Marcia Sons is trying to get a change, but instead he iced it. So a big face off here against a tired group of hat tricks. 
Big face off for Sheehan, and he loses it. Baker, the clean win, save made by Wilson. They'll bounce out of play with 5.07 left. And now the hat tricks can get their change. We're at that point in the game where faceoffs get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, and we already saw how an icing led to a huge goal late in the second period. Carolina iced it twice in a row in the final 15 seconds. And the hat tricks won that second faceoff and ended up leading to Ratcliffe's goal, which right now is really the big, big difference in the game. Instead of a one goal game, it made it a two goal game. The momentum killer right now is that's a turnover off of Benel's stick right at the blue line. Walks it on, shot sails well wide. Pashtuka knocks it down at the point, steps in, looks for a pass off the boards. Wilson down, Kettlinger there for it. Wilson's lost his stick. Yao comes over to get this puck. He'll float this out. Wilson will run over and get his stick. Good, almost coffin corner throw by Jared Yao. Allows Brian Wilson to get reset. Pashtuka glides on. Abdella up for Baker. Hard hit by Ojik. Ojik will get this up and over the line. 4.25 the time remaining. Baker goes down. This is going to be a delayed penalty against the hat tricks. Baker took the hit, and Carolina will get the extra attacker on. Long pass up the wing for Ford. Ford glides in. Thunderbirds have six skaters on the ice. Wilson the blocker save. Keplinger turns, fires. Wilson another save. And he'll put his glove on top of it with four minutes and three seconds left to go. Carolina is about set to head on to the power play with 4.03 left down by two. We'll take a breather and get you the full scoring on this in a moment. 4-2 Hattricks in the lead here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde drops the puck. We're going to have a fight at center. Oh, oh, back with a couple on. of big rights. He scores! Dr. Jared DiLorenzo is a proud member of the Danbury Hattricks medical team. Stop by and see them on North Street in downtown Danbury. Feeling good is an option. Dr. DiLorenzo and his staff can get you there. Well, before the Hattricks can get this one to 60 minutes of complete hockey, they've got a huge penalty kill coming up here. 4.03 to go in the third period, a must-win game three of this championship series. Hattricks lead at four to two, but they're on the kill and Tobias Ojic is in the box. By the way, I'd be remiss if I did not note that Tyler Noseworthy, who you just saw, it is his birthday today. Champion with the Danbury Whalers, head coach of the NA3 Junior Hattricks, assistant coach on both the NAHL and FBHL Danbury Hattricks. So happy birthday to Tyler Noseworthy. I asked him what he was hoping for. He said one thing, a W. And the Hattricks are 403 away from giving him that. Ojic sitting in the box. Hattricks have just killed off one power play. They now have to kill off an Ojik roughing minor. The officials signaling a reset, and it's a good faceoff win for Panacea. Up to the point for Kennedy. It's worth noting, Hussey is still in goal at the opposite end. It's a power play chance right now. You're maybe a little too early to pull him. Well, not only too early, but short-handed. The hat yeah. could keep firing it down the length of the ice, try and hit the empty net. To the circle, back up top for Ford. Steps into it, winds up for the blast. Blocked down by Johnny Ruiz. Dowler goes down. McDonald will get this up and out. Hussey out of his crease to the circle. will just tap it for Ford. hat get their first change. It's a good first part of the kill. Leaves it behind him. Across the blue line. Runs on, Sheehan sends Kennedy down, gets back up. Abdella tangles him against the board. Salak there for it, five players wrestling for puck possession. Salak will take it away. Panacek up top for four. Minute and five left to go on the power play. Panacek steps into it at the slot, fumbles it. Puck loose and Ford will settle it. Thunderbirds will reset, winds up for the shot. Blocker save made by Wilson, bounces to the corner and up top to the point for Panacek. 
Low for Kennedy at the circle. Turns and looks for it to the circle. Looks for the shot. Blocked down. Don't think that ever got on net. Rolls up to the blue line. He'll hold it and look for it low. Cross. Ford will play it to the point. Kennedy winds up for the shot. Pass it low to the slot. Salak sails it too high. Hits the glass and stays in. Panachik walks the line. Winds up for the shot. Wanted Salak. He caught him on the skate instead of the stick. 20 seconds of power play time left. Panachik prowls. Drops it for Salak. Kennedy at the point. 15 left. Ford at the circle. Salak shot. Sails it wide. And the net came off its moorings with 10 seconds left to go. Yeah, Salak had a couple good looks there. One set up right uh, between the circles, and he sailed it high and wide. And then here from the left side, the left wing, he again was set up, and he kind of shanked the shot a little bit, tried to go short side. And as Wilson pushed off, he uh, hit the post. Timeout and knocked it off the uh, stanchion. Sorry to cut you off, Jim. Timeout taken by the Danbury hat tricks. Yeah, that's... Their penalty killers are tired. You want to have your best yep. PK guys out there. You want to have your best face-off guy out here. Ten seconds to go on the Ojik penalty. 2.13 to go in the third period. Danbury up 4-2. And an interesting thing, Ojik was up in the box signaling, looking for directions. Do I run back to the bench or do I go to the offensive end? Yeah. And I'm not sure what they signaled back to him, but... If you get the chance to have Ojik running right downhill, you send him, I think. I, I, if you have possession of the puck. Yes. Because if you don't, and the puck is in your end, you know, Tobias better get the heck in back into the defensive end. Forget about Correct. going to the bench. Correct. You know, you got to get back to five on five. So. Correct. So, Carolina, I believe, yes. The net is empty now. It will be a six on four for 10 seconds here. The end of the, their power play, they will pull the goalie and go six on four. So a big face off to take here, and it looks like it's going to be Lucas to Benedet to okay. take the face off. Johnny Ruiz is on the bench. Keplinger will be his opponent, tied up on the dot. De Benedet tried to muscle it forward. Six skaters compared to the hat tricks, four. The net is empty. Kennedy winds up, wants the shot, steps into it, blocked down. Follow-up chance by Salak, sent aside. McKittrick tried to get this out for Tobias Ojik. He's out of the box. Ojik had empty netters against Binghamton twice. Ojik slaloms in and puts it in the empty net again! Tobias Ojik makes it 5-2! Saturday Night Hockey, here we go! They played it perfectly. Ojik out of the box and just put it in the twine. His yeah. third goal of the playoffs. All of them empty netters. Yeah, each an empty net, right? A wonderful sequence, a great, great finisher. I believe that's Ojik's second point of the game as well. Yes, it is, and he's been an agitator. He's done it all. Set it up wonderfully. Face off one by Ruiz to McDonald. Hattrick's up by three with under two minutes left to go. Trying to close this out. They do so. All they have done is earned themselves one more game this season. As Amesbury, oh, Amesbury with the empty netter. Daniel Amesbury got to the loose puck and put it in the twine to make it six to two. A careless turnover and diamond hands gets his first point of the playoffs. Boy, everything Billy McCreary did tonight with the line changes, with the roster changes, the lineup changes, everything has worked tonight. The golden touch for Billy McCreary and yeah, diamond hands, look at this. A giveaway and a gimme. But it's the hustle of Amesbury again yeah. that we've seen all night. That's a bad goal to give up. That was not a good goal. That'll be an unassisted goal for Daniel Amesbury. Got nine points, one goal. They're only now a announcing the Ojik goal. De Benedet will get an assist on that as well. Amesbury will carry it on, settle it. He'll put it on net. Hussey puts it in his glove and throws it out for Butita. 
A remarkable game for the hat tricks. Came back down two nothing in the series. Pile up six goals, two of them empty netters. Daniel Amesbury's goal being announced in house. Michael Marchessano walk this forward. Plays it at the circle, turns and fires it. It's an unassisted goal for Amesbury. The scoring on Ojik's goal. Ojik and De Benedet the assist. That line of Ojik, De Benedet, and McKittrick, perfect. Yeah, they, they were outstanding tonight. And again, give Billy McCurry some credit. He did some, you know, made some lineup changes. He, he switched up the lines, and it seemed like everything that he did turned up gold tonight. Final couple of seconds burning down. Pamaleon gets hit away from the play. Hattricks don't want to get involved in more mess as Susie and McKittrick, or Susie and De Benedette rather tied up. We get a tie up at the center ice logo as the buzzer sounds. The Hattricks extend their season one more day. The series is at two games to one. A 6-2 final here at the Danbury Ice Arena. I tell you, the building is shaking. Really beginning to end. You know, the hat tricks just kept getting better, better, better. And all the things that they do well, they did tonight. They played with pace, they played with confidence. They Everybody, top to bottom, generated offense. And they were solid defensively. We talked about the block shots. Good goaltending tonight. It all comes through. And Daniel McKittrick raises the barrel at center ice. Man, does he deserve it. Weight off his shoulders. A three-point night for him, including his first two goals of the playoffs. A badly needed performance for Daniel McKittrick. Tobias Ojik, another empty netter. Daniel Amesbury gets an empty net goal as well. Jacob Radcliffe, a goal right at the end of the second period that really set the tone for this game. Danbury was in the dumps on the bus ride back from Winston-Salem. This feels better. But again, all they have done is extend their season one more day. They have to do this again tomorrow just to extend their season to Sunday. So you could also say that they've held serve. Yes. They have home ice advantage. The home team has won every game in the series so far. It just so happened Carolina had the first two. The next one is back in this building again. The hat tricks this season are now 3-0 in elimination games at Danbury Ice Arena. They are 5-0 at Danbury Ice Arena in elimination games in their history. And this was, this was just everything that the franchise, when they, when they put this team together back in 2019, that they could hope, could hope for when they finally have a championship series game, host that game, this is the atmosphere you wanted. Here are the three stars of the game. All of them are hat tricks. Tobias Ojik gets the number three star. He'll run back out, gives a wave to the crowd. It's a pretty subtle one for what Ojik is yeah. frequently doing. He's got to do this again tomorrow, man. Man, he played so well tonight. Such emotion and passion. I think it was his best game of the season. A two-point performance for Brendan Dowler and the second consecutive home game in which Brendan Dowler scores the game-winning goal, the number two star of the evening. And that was a good, good, smart goal where they just put it on with the delayed penalty. And, of course, the number one star, a three-point game for a guy who badly needed it from Coral Harbor, none of it, Daniel McKittrick. Three points. A guy who needed it, he'll skate around, He'll come right over to the penalty box. He's going to get something from the guys. <laughs> He's having a uh, chat. Uh, he wants a puck. Yeah, he I'm wants a puck from this. Oh, uh, yeah. I They'll think give he, it to he, him. Yeah, he wants to toss yep. it up maybe into yep. the crowd. Or, He's, yeah. He's looking. 
He's looking. Is he going to take this one or is he going to toss it? He's going to take it. He's going to take it home with him. One of his best games he's had as a hat trick. A needed win. 6 to the final. Brian Wilson, excellent down the stretch of the game. Hat tricks hung tight. But I'll note again, the series is now 2-1. to one. Carolina still needs just one more victory to win the Commissioner's Cup. They can get it tomorrow. The hat tricks can extend the series to Sunday with a good performance again tomorrow night. Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting. I know the hat tricks were down two games to none and all and, and had been pretty outplayed in those first two games on the road down in Winston-Salem. But some of the other numbers spoke to the hat tricks coming back tonight. And one of them was they had not lost three games in a row all season. That's right. The hat tricks had lost two in a row a few times. And then, of course, had lost two in a row to open up this series. So, you know, it was a little something on their side. But the numbers here on their home ice overwhelming. Are they are unbeaten at home, you know, in four games, uh, you know, in the playoffs on home ice. Three of those have been elimination games. Uh, you know, just really those are the numbers they, that, that you look at that are striking. And now 28-2-2 this season in this building at Danbury Ice Arena, playing in front of it. Just, Chris, an absolutely electric crowd. Yes. Electric atmosphere tonight uh, on home ice. And, you know, I know there will be more of the same tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, when we drop the puck again. They got to do it again. All they could do is win tonight's game. They have done that. Now all they can do tomorrow is win tomorrow night's game. 6-2, the final. We hope you have enjoyed your time with us this evening. For everybody with the Danbury Hat Tricks, for my partner in crime, Jim Cerny, I'm Chris Lynch. We hope you have enjoyed your time with us this evening. Be warm, be well. We'll see you for game four of the Commissioner's Cup Championship Series tomorrow night.